Tonight, it's the historic 100th meeting between two in-state Texas rivals, the home team, Texas Longhorns, and the 25th ranked Baylor Bears. Without a doubt, we're in the toughest division in college football. That's why we're in it. If you're going to play, play with the best. Have an opportunity to beat the best. Baylor has the fifth most powerful offense in the nation. The Texas defense is number one, the toughest in the Big 12. I'm feeling invincible tonight. I'm alive, take a look into my eyes. Texas has to stop Baylor QB Robert Griffin, the nation's third ranked overall offensive weapon. The bull bound 25th ranked Baylor Bears travel to Austin to take on the hungry and fired up Texas Longhorns. Big 12 college football excitement starts now. It's a classic autumn night in the state capital of the Lone Star State for a showdown between two old rivals that have been going at it since 1901. Welcome to Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Tonight, a matchup the Big 12 South, 25th ranked Baylor taking on the Longhorns of Texas. And eight weeks ago, no one could have predicted that Baylor would be on top of the Big 12 South, but the rest, they are looking up now at the Bears. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Joel Klatt. Welcome to Austin. They are truly the surprise of the entire Big 12. Bowl eligible Joel Klatt for the first time since 1995 for the Baylor Bears. And the reason, RG3, what a playmaker, one of the very best in the country, Robert Griffin. Well, I tell you what, this guy, I love his maturation process from year one in 2008 when really he was a running quarterback. And now he's added passing to his repertoire. This guy is a sensational passer, quick release, and his ability to throw the football is what ultimately has led to the offensive success for Baylor and the big plays that Texas has got to limit here tonight. RG3, quite simply, he's a Heisman candidate, and even Mac Brown will tell you so. He means that much to the Baylor Bears. Well, the Texas Longhorns, what a rarity. They come in off back-to-back -back home losses for the first time since Mac Brown took over 13 years ago. Offensively, incredibly incredible consistent the defense so that's another story they have shown up this year they really have even a couple of weeks ago uh, up in Lincoln Nebraska when they played so well against that fast Nebraska team they've got to play to that same level here tonight against Baylor they got to play great in space for Will Muschamp and the lead guy for them Sam Ocho the senior defensive end he's got to play fantastic here tonight because he will be on that island in the zone read game with Robert Griffin the entire game he's their best player he's their leader and he has to be that guy tonight if Texas wants to beat Baylor in their home stadium as usual 100,000 119 at Texas Memorial <laughs> Stadium as Colt McCoy has jersey number 12 retired only five other Longhorns have accomplished that honor so a treat for all of us to be here for Big 12 College Football Saturday all presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors stay with us great show down to the Big 12 South Baylor and Texas coming up next Play. Iowa State, the fans weren't happy, the players weren't happy, and definitely Matt Brown was not happy. Talking about Brown, he is determined to correct the problems. Sports can be cruel when you lose. It can be overblown when you win. But the truth is, there's a lot of simple life's lessons in this. And uh, a lot of coaches have said, uh, football may not build character, but it reveals it. I always think the measure of a man really comes out when he's under pressure. My job's easy when we've won 25 and lost two in two years. Uh, my job gets more interesting now, uh, but it's time that I earn my pay when we're struggling a little bit and I need to help us get back on track. All right, meanwhile, on the other side of football, Baylor Bears season has so far been... Super! That's right, super. The big win against Kansas State last week. Baylor, for the first time since 1995, is bowl eligible. And Art Browse, the Baylor Bear head coach, is happy about that. Well, it's, you know, that, that's really how you continue to improve as a football program, you know, because you do get to spend extra time uh, not only with your older guys, but with your young guys. You get to hang around them, you get to meet with them, and you get to work on them on a little more individual basis. So that, that's going to be a good thing for us at Baylor. All right, the fans are excited. It's about to kick this thing off. College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoor. right 
by his side. I don't blame him. Stay right there, and Hughes here. Robert Griffin the third. And the toss won by Mac Brown's side, but they have deferred their option to the second half. So Baylor is going to have the football first in such a rarity. And we just heard from Mac Brown in our report from Jim Knox. It's easy when you go 25 and 2 in consecutive seasons as tonight's game in brilliant high definition, all brought to you by Phillips Televisions. So Justin Tucker is ready to kick it away the junior from right here Austin Westlake High School Mikhail Baker back deep along with Lanier Sampson and we are just about ready to go in Austin Texas college football Saturday and what a kick over the head of Baker and a first and ten for RG3 and the Baylor Bears at their own 20 yard line and how hot is Robert Griffin over the last four the month of October has been amazing for Baylor averaging 603 yards a game you look at his season numbers over the last four he is averaging 350 yards a game passing Jay Finley more involved the guy we'll talk about in the backfield but Robert Griffin the third Mac Brown said it best he should be considered strongly for the Heisman Trophy for what he's done this year for the Baylor Bears to first and ten to 20 out of the edge and a little comeback for Williams. So it falls incomplete right there for the sophomore for Dallas. And we mentioned Jay Finley, but the offensive line has picked it up. And according to the offensive corner, well, Danny Watkins, the left tackle, he sets the tone for the entire offensive line. Jay Finley comes in the tailback off a record-setting day, the best in Bear history. 250 yards rushing last week in their win at 47 to 42 on their home field. So after the drop, on first and ten. A checkoff at the line. Special teams have also been outstanding this year. Zone read, Griffin out of the edge and can't break away from Shockey Brown, the senior from Houston. And over there as well, Christian Scott, the safety, the junior from Dallas's Skyline High School. Defensively, in the call it a 4 2 5. Both Achos out there, Sam, phenomenal season. Emmanuel, he's been nicked up a little bit. And in the secondary, we just saw the safety, Scott. You'll see Shockey Brown in the corner, also Curtis Brown. With all that experience for the two seniors that are three-year starters on the corners. And honorable mention, all Big 12 last year for Curtis Brown. Third and six. Ton of time. And a flag comes out late. Finley held up. And they'll call it on Emmanuel Acho. Defense number 18, 10-yard penalty, first down. So break Joel Platt right away off the bat for Baylor. Emmanuel Acho is going to get called on the holding. They're trying to isolate Finley in the middle of the field. You see Acho get a little piece of the jersey. It wasn't the trip at the end, but actually that hold, that piece of the jersey earlier in the play. I like the game plan from Baylor. Spread Texas out and try to utilize your athletes against their athletes. Finley on Acho early in a third down situation. Texas recruited RG3. They wanted Robert Griffin III to come here, but they wanted him as an athlete. Yeah, he said, I will only go to school if you recruit me as a quarterback. OU and Texas both wanted him as an athlete. That's why he chose Houston and then followed Art Browse from Houston to Bay. And now on first down, high toss taken in over on the side by Lanier Sampson, the sophomore from Mesquite. So good yardage on first down, and now a little rhythm. Let's see if they go up bring up the tempo a little bit on a gain of nine the first first down of the game is the most important for an offense because it establishes that rhythm it's put on the ground man Griffin is buried Sam Acho on top of the situation honorable mention all big 12 last year so all they needed this defense was kind of a miscue and they got it trouble on the snap for Robert Griffin you see that a lot from offenses that are primarily in the shotgun quarterbacks that aren't used to taking that Snap under the center. He fumbles it. Acho alertly gets on him right away. Gets a sack in the backfield. Karon Johnson in on the H back on the right side. Need about three, and they get it on that final surge by Jay Finley. So across the 44, out to the 45. 
Finley, a tough runner. You also see Terrence Ganaway, Jared Salubi, the ace back, but 5'11, 205. The senior, of course, a can of came through. It's all about effort in third and short situations. You got to spin, fight, do anything you can to move those sticks. Finley does it. First down, Baylor. Empty it out. As he looks, and that holds Texas to the personnel that obviously Baylor wants on the field for matchups. So three on the short side, two on the bottom of the screen, the wide side. And Robert Griffin, a little one over the middle and slightly behind Kendall Wright. Usually Wright's got good hands, so he's going to bring it out in. The junior from Pittsburgh, Texas. Boy, I love the scheme, though, from Kendall Wright and the Baylor Bears. They run a little delay route over the middle, stopping, drawing the linebacker close, and then accelerating into the free space of the defense. Robert Griffin just throws it behind him, or else that's going to go for a lot of yards. It'll be second and ten from the 45. How many two minutes to play? We're scoreless at Texas Memorial Stadium. Daryl Royal Field. And what a sight on a beautiful night. Finley scrambles his way up the middle into the secondary. And what a save by Acho. Got him low and held on for dear life. Safety was coming over a little bit late, though. Keenan Robinson, too. If you don't see a lot of defenders in the middle of the field for Texas, it's because of this system from Baylor. Spreading them out and then getting downhill in the running game like Finley and Griffin both like to do when they run the football. But that's why they're so hard to defend. you got to be on the outside for the bubble screen, and then they crease you right up the middle with the run. Jay Finley with more yardage over the last two games than he had in the first six for the Baylor Bears. And it shows early right past Griffin. Not a bad snap. He lost his concentration, and then he loses his footing thanks to Sam Ocho. And did it get taken away? Yes! Ball came loose. Ocho made the play, and Texas covers it. The snap... Not a bad snap, Joel, just like you said. It's just to the side. you got to handle that as a quarterback. But then Acho comes in, Ooh, he actually trips, trips him. him, and gets away with it. <laughs> the ball comes out. Absolutely gets away with it. Ball was out before Griffin hits the ground, but Texas gets away with a trip there from Sam Acho and gets the football which is not what they've been doing all season long this defense has not created turnovers like they have in the past it's one of the reasons why they're sitting here at four and three in the middle of the season yeah they led the nation in interceptions last year came in 106 out of 120 teams in turnover ratio plus minus margin and now on first down big hole up the middle and on the handoff over to the right side, actually, on the little reverse action. They gave it to the wide receiver, and it goes for good yardage. John Childs on the reverse, the former quarterback, came here as a quarterback. I will not be surprised at all if Greg Davis empties the playbook here tonight. They've come under a lot of fire offensively here in Austin. Now, Garrett Gilbert throwing for the first time, and a dart taken in. And it's a first down to Malcolm Williams, a junior from Garland. He's right at the marker, should have it inside the 29. Garrett Gilbert has got to be more efficient tonight if they want to beat Baylor. That touchdown to interception ratio of 6 to 8 has got to get better. You have to take care of the football as a quarterback. It's your primary objective, along with getting first downs and touchdowns. If he starts to protect the ball better, they will start to put up more points as an offense. Starting in plus territory. And out of the backfield. Scrambling inside the 29, close to the 28 is Monroe. DJ Monroe, the running back. And the offensive line. Left side, the most experienced, the senior with 35 starts. Kyle Hicks, the left tackle. Newton was going to get the start. We've already seen Monroe. They'll use Whitaker and Cody Johnson. They haven't settled on one back, though. Three have rotated. Newton, Whitaker, and Johnson, and now in the mix, DJ Monroe. Over to the left side, Kobe. Nothing out there. So on the short side is Monroe once again. And our Phillips starting 11 defensively. Phil Taylor, he's kind of the man in the middle of the senior from Clinton, Maryland, who transferred from Penn State. Linebackers, Francis Antonio Johnson, the senior from Waco. And Odom gets the start. You might remember his father, Cliff, Clifton Odom. He is starting for the injured chance, Casey, on the corner. Now, Trey Newton into the backfield. A regular on third and just about seven. We're scoreless early. Four down minutes gone by. Gilbert with time. And 
to the wide side. Not enough for the first down unless, and he did. He got the flag, and it may have been on the face mask. Kirkendall made the catch. The senior from Round Rock, just a few minutes outside of town. After the runner was down, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the defense number seven. Half the distance of the goal. First down. So half the distance to the goal after the takeover, starting in Baylor territory. This is your basic curl flat combination, and Gilbert delivers a strike to Kirkendall, but Antonio Johnson, the linebacker, number seven, comes in late, leads with the head, all of those things, and now the sensitive age of football that we live in, in the NFL and college football alike, that's going to draw a flag 100% of the time. And now they stop playing. It's down to the eight. So the takeaway was created by Acho. You can't review a play like that. No. It, it's Correction, the ball should be placed at the nine and a half. First and goal. Texas isn't complaining either way, but you can't review what we saw with the Acho trip. Just a break that goes your way. You got to capitalize, and that's what this offense has got to do now in a first and goal situation is get seven. Get this ball in the end zone if you're Texas. They're on Kirkendall in motion to the short side. Give it to Trey Newton, same side, and they're on his back in a hurry. Coming up quickly, and there were a couple there, but Byron Lander, the strong safety, hard hitter, good run support, Rodney Chadwick as well. No gain on that carry for Trey Newton. Statistically, Texas doesn't look like they're running the ball very well. Greg Davis told us it's been the style of game that has led them into throwing the ball more like being behind Iowa State a week ago. He wants to establish that run early and keep Robert Griffin off the field. DJ Monroe comes into the game and comes into motion into the backfield. Will he get it? No. Gilbert out of the edge, looking for the back of the end zone, in and out of the hands, and almost intercepted. He had Barrett Matthews. It should have been caught. And it falls, fortunately for Texas, incomplete. Francis looked like he could have come up with a pick. Too many plays like this from Texas this year. Not taking advantage of your opportunity. This ball is absolutely thrown perfectly from Garrett Gilbert. It's got to be caught by Matthews. That is six points that comes off the scoreboard because of a lack of concentration and inconsistent play, which is exactly what has hurt Texas in their three losses this year. Now can they capitalize on such a short field or do they settle for three? It'll be third and goal outside of the nine. Here comes the heat. Gilbert scramble mode, corner of the end zone, up for grabs and out of the end zone, even though it was taken in by Kirkendall. Well, the heat all of a sudden flushed and kind of put Garrett Gilbert into a scramble situation where he was flustered. Yeah, it's a risk reward proposition to blitz this close and he's clearly out of bounds as you see on the replay but when you decide to blitz inside the 10 you've got to have ultimate faith in your outside guys your athletes on the outside that they can go mono -e mono with Texas Baylor clearly feels like they can do that so they dial up a pressure and they get Garrett Gilbert to move his feet a little bit probably throw a pass that he doesn't want to ends up out of bounds you saw the numbers for Justin Tucker. It's a 26-yard attempt and points off the turnover. But to Baylor's credit, they minimize the damage. So Justin Tucker with the 26-yard field goal. Matthews, though, could have had six for the Longhorns. Was it in the mid 70s today here in Austin? Uh, it, it was a great day. This is a perfect night for football here in the heart of Texas, and we've got a good one on our hands here. Texas, the opportunity early off the turnover. They got away with that trip from Sam Acho. Griffin fumbles the ball, but then they're unable to knock it into the end zone. That's exactly what Mac Brown has talked to us about. All week long, Joel, is the fact that they have been inconsistent. They haven't taken advantage of their opportunities, and already early, that plagues them, even though they've got the 3 0 lead. Well, Mac Brown wins 90% of the time, but he scores first in his 13 years in Texas. So, Baylor uphill, but not that bad when you consider who's taken at the 39 away from Robert Griffin. Mikhail Baker, Lanier Sampson again, and a nice boot by Tucker. And Baylor, for the second consecutive time, will have it first and 10 had their own 20. How tough is it for Baylor to win in Austin? All time. They have eight wins, 43 losses, and two ties.
not a great percentage. Yeah, but now they've got Robert Griffin. That's they, the equalizer. You see what he did last week. Throws for a high percentage, 400 yards, and his, again, maturation as a passer is what has made this Baylor offense so effective and efficient scoring points. They're averaging over 42 points a game in Big 12 contests. 47-42 win over Kansas State. Salubi in the backfield set up the screen, and he's, well, he needed that block. He gets that block, and he may be going down the sideline. Still a first down, and a good job over on that side of the field by Christian Scott, the safety. Otherwise, Joel, I think it's a touchdown. Well, they do a great job of faking the bubble screen to the right and then releasing those linemen in the back over. But you're right, Christian Scott, if he gets chopped down, that's going to go probably the distance. There was nobody there, but because Finley had to slow down and avoid Christian Scott, the pursuit was able to get there for Texas. It'll be first and 10 outside of the 37. Zone read for Griffin. And a little dart resourceful isn't he gets it to Josh Gordon thought he was going to run it they took away his first option it looked like the H backer tied in and he finds Gordon uh, that's what makes him so tough is he keeps his eyes down the field as a quarterback if you've got world-class speed like like Griffin you keep your eyes down the field you just put those defenders in such a tough spot do they come up and defend the run or do they stay with their man in pass coverage he will beat you regardless of the decision you make Tempo, you want it. You've got it from RG3 and the Baylor Bears, and they've got another first down to the 49 of the Longhorns. Bouncing out and trying to keep it alive, and he does for about three or four. That is just not quitting on a play. Jay Finley coming off the 250-yard effort last week. He is currently sixth all-time in rushing at Baylor, and you can understand after that kind of effort where it looked like no game. First and 10 line brought to you by Phillips Television. Griffin, little dump off, Kendall Wright. And now it brings up a third and short. Almost like a running play with a pitch and catch. And your, your wide receivers have got to be great blockers if this is the style of offense that you're going to run. And Josh Gordon gets a decent block there to set up a shorter third down situation. It'll be Finley in the backfield. They've got the sledgehammer in there. Anytime you see 49 in the game, look out. 300 pounder. Cuero, Texas, K. Ron Johnson. He's definitely their K factor. Setting up on the hip of the right tackle. Need a little more than three. Griffin looking back, and he's got it for the first down. And will he stay in bounds? No. Out of bounds, Tevin Reese, the true freshman from Temple, Texas. What a little dart by Griffin. How about the accuracy on the run? Everything starts with the zone read from Baylor. In order to get the second level and the linebackers up closer to the line of scrimmage, that's how Tevin Reese can get behind them into an open area for the first down. But the dart thrown by Griffin, you're seeing him throw the ball as good as anybody in the country. And with his world-class speed, that's why he should be mentioned and, and in the discussion when you're talking about Heisman Trophy candidates. And Robert Griffin now 4 of 6 to start the game 43 early passing yards first and 10 25 yard line of Texas underneath Reese trying to make a miss which he does he said make a miss guys the coaches tell us and he's got nine and check that it was Josh Gordon 12 not 16 as we head down to Jim Knox Knoxie all right Joe I tell you what Robert Griffin off to a hot start talked to him before the game he told me believe it or not he's a better quarterback this year basically for sitting out most of last year he said he was on the sidelines got to see more of the game got to learn and the game actually slowed down for him Joel you'll know all about that it definitely slows down when you're on the sideline I spent a lot of time on the sideline it's inside the 15 and it's a first and ten a little option read how many different facets of yeah. this scheme are we going to see early well you know there's a lot of things that they can do they can play the vertical game they can play the horizontal game but because their offense is predicated on space and athleticism this is the part of the field that they've struggled in inside the 15 yard line this is when Texas begins to have an advantage because Baylor does not have that space like in the middle of the field started back at their 20 Ganaway is belted Barry did a good job losing our yard to hang on to the football the junior from DeKalb Texas Keiston Randall pop free in the middle with Keenan Robinson underneath has been a problem the two inside guys for Texas 
And I bring that up because UCLA ran it effectively. Yeah, they did. Two or three teams have had huge, close to 300-yard rushing days. Iowa State ran the ball effectively, and yet they went up to Lincoln and stopped one of the best rushing teams in all of the country. Right, go so, figure. It, you know, the inconsistent <laughs> play. Jared Zalubi out of the backfield, middle of the field, battered away at the last second. Looking for Kendall Wright. Exceptional play by the defensive back, Vaccaro, the safety. Kenny Vaccaro from Brownwood, Texas. This is a poor throw from Griffin. This ball has got to be up higher and get some air under that because Wright's going to score a touchdown in the back of the end zone. But when you give the second level or the safety a chance to bat the ball down, that's a poor throw from Griffin. Probably should have had six points there with a great route from Kendall Wright. Third and a little more than ten. It's the tenth play of the drive coming up to the Bears that started back at their own 20. Will they have to settle for a field goal try? Bunch him on the wide side, three over there, and the inside guy, he's got it, but he's short of the first down. Kendall Wright, the junior from Pittsburgh, Texas. So the field goal unit coming on, and what a field goal unit has been. The accuracy and the distance on display tonight. The redshirt freshman from Crowley, Texas, Aaron Jones, as Robert Griffin discusses what he saw and what Art Bryles was thinking. It was the second down play that led to this. He did not put air on that ball. That's why Vaccaro blocked it down. It's tough to convert third and anything over five when you're inside the 15-yard line. So Jones in to tie it up. It'll be a 24-yard attempt, and he is now 17 of 21, a guy who has made more field goals this year for Baylor already than they've had in the two previous seasons combined. Tied at three in the Lone Star State is the Bears and the Longhorns. in control 34 to 17 over Ole Miss at halftime looking to go 9 and 0 the Tigers at Alabama Thanksgiving weekend back to Austin for the two Joels thank you Rick and it is going to boil down to Tuscaloosa uh, it sure that will. game is going to be and I've looked ahead it's going to be at Bama and you, and you look at, at Alabama with Mich Michigan State and Missouri both going down today with their first loss oh. You always want to lose early in the BCS because now Alabama will have time to Look get out. back up there in the standings. How about Jay Finley? Sixth all-time in rushing in Baylor. Senior from Corsicana. And, and there's an urgency. Yep. And you know about it when you know you're looking at the end of your career the last four or five games. He's playing with a lot of heart. It's second. And two after the gain of eight. Finley belted. Man, that time. Push back. High and low they had him. It was Keystone Randall up top. And that's a pile driver for you. Texas is having to play a pretty risky defense here to stop Baylor. They're playing with no levels. A lot of people at the line of scrimmage, which means if Baylor can crease them just once and get into space, it's going to go for a long game. Baylor fifth in the nation in total offense. Fifth in the country in passing. 20th in scoring. Better than 35 a game. And remember, it was Texas last year, not Baylor. Texas was one of the league leaders, our nation's leaders in scoring with 39 a contest. 35 a game for Baylor, only 23 coming in for Texas. Turn the corner, Finley's got the first down. Nice read by Robert Griffin. And it's out to the 32 to keep the drive alive at the final minute of the opening 15. Indecision is just completely exploited by speed and that's where you get explosion plays or even a play like that where you're gaining three yards but you're moving the sticks because the defense has to be aware of Robert Griffin and the speed from Finley and Griffin is what leads to those types of situations spread them out four wide receivers with Finley in the backfield and false start near side false start on the offense number 79 that is the other Robert Griffin, Robert T. Griffin. <laughs> so it marks it off five. If it's going to happen, let it happen on first down. I think you could make it back, you know, especially with high explosive offense like Baylor, but they're going against a Texas defense that does not allow the big play. This is definitely strength against strength in this matchup. It's, it's a pleasure to watch. Good shoestring grab. And about seven on the catch by Reese. 
And he bolted like he was ready to break through those two. Blake getting and held on, though. But still, they get the penalty yardage back and get about three more. So that is going to be the end of the first quarter of play here in Austin, Texas, as we continue with Big 12 College Football, all presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Even so far, who's going to break it wide open with RG3 on the premises? in space they're tough to stop yeah, they get in the red zone once that's where they faltered all year long because of the way their offense is designed but you got to credit Texas they have gotten that turnover and then they did bow their neck in the red zone Robert Griffin 8 of 11 in the first quarter for 83 yards and now on second and about seven his own read and he stumbles across the line of scrimmage and that was forced because of Alex Okafor he took away the gap he wanted. Yeah, the defense for Texas has got to play a fundamentally sound game, which means you keep your shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. If you get upfield or you tune your shoulders, you're going to create lanes and gaps for guys like Finley and Griffin to run through, and that's when you get big plays. Need six. They're three of four on their third down tries so far. A little more than five, almost six yards. Got to go past the 42. Finley, the decoy. And coming back and it's incomplete incomplete going for Lanier Sampson so we're talking about the strength of this Texas team it is clearly their defensive side of the ball well, this is that risk reward style of defense it's his own read but Sam Ocho does a great job of staying balanced staying there and not giving a definitive read to Robert Griffin and that's why he's got to throw off his back foot and Curtis Brown ultimately knocks that pass away from Sanson, but that's a good defensive possession for Texas. That's exactly the style of defense you have to play against this high explosive offense from Baylor. Two time all Big 12 punter Derek Epperson with one of the strongest legs in the country, not just the conference, gets into it. Back deep is Brown. And over the shoulder, puts it on the ground. His own man takes it away. Can he get out of the end zone? Still loose. It might be a touchdown banner. They don't make a ruling yet. And what will they call it? As it's picked up by the Bears and picked up by Baylor's Tracy Roberts to make that Bre Brody Trahan. Trahan, a backup quarterback. Still no word. They put a mark down inside the one. They pointed to Baylor. Like this is going to be Baylor's ball on a yeah, inside the a one. And are they calling it a muff? Aaron Williams took out the legs. That should be a touchdown because Curtis Brown never has possession of this ball. The second time when he picks it up, he never actually, as he's going down to the ground. And it's on the goal line. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess the ground does knock the ball out the second time. But Rolling on the field is that the kicking team recovered the ball at the one-yard line. It will be Baylor's ball, first and goal, at the one. So picking it up at the one, just inside the one, Baylor will have the football. Now, every play, of course, is reviewed, and they're looking at that real quickly now. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if they take a look at this further, but turnovers have played... Texas 106th in the country in turnover margin whereas Baylor they've done a great job of not only gaining turnovers but capitalizing on those turnovers as we go back take another look at Curtis Brown drops the initial punt and then as he picks it up he definitely has possession here and when he goes down that ball is not out completely of the end zone I wouldn't be shocked at all if they call this and it comes back as a safety with Texas kicking it back to Baylor because the football has got to be 100% out of the end zone. No part of the football can be touching that that plane or the end zone plane. And that's what they're going to be looking at. I would suspect, Joel, that this will be a safety rather than Baylor ball at the one-yard line. And let's also give credit to Cliff Odom. And Clifton Odom was the one who got to him right at the goal line. You see flying by, actually, Instead of Odom on that play, Mike Hicks, the reserve safety, number 17. So he takes the legs out from Curtis Brown. 
They Odom are. was there, but it was yeah. Hicks. Yeah, and they, they are taking a look at this and, and reviewing it up in the booth. And they're going to be looking at a couple of different things. One, did he have possession when that elbow hit, the left elbow for, for Curtis Brown? And if they're saying that he had complete possession, this will be a safety. Because they, it never left. If they thought the ball was juggling at all, then it actually should be a just a touchdown Baylor because the man who recovered the fumble for Baylor never was down. His knee was a, he le he leapt into the end zone. So that's really the only two outcomes of this review that we can possibly have. It is upstairs right now. And the referee from the Big 12, as you saw, he headed over for communication. That's Scott Novak. It's a win-win right now for Art Bryles. It is. <laughs> That's it what is. it boils down to. And, and good special teams coverage on Curtis Brown. Trying to think. And a mistake by Brown as well, well, going over the shoulder inside his own tent. Absolutely. you got to let that ball go. Just put your hand up. Try to deke the opponent or, or the kicking team into, you know, stopping with you and letting that ball go into the end zone. But I, for getting it, it was a punt. You can't advance that. So that's why it would be Baylor ball at the one. So it will not be a touchdown for Baylor if they deem that Curtis Brown did not have possession when that left elbow hit. So still trying to determine a minute into the second quarter. If Baylor, I, the leaders of the Big 12 yeah. South, and, and we remind you of what's at stake here because Texas has lost back-to-back -back home games for the first time. Since Mac Brown has been the head coach here in Austin. If I'm Mac Brown, I need this to be a safety. You do not want to throw six points up on the board, or excuse me, give the give the ball to Baylor at the one yard line. Then they have to determine that Brown actually had possession before he hit the goal line when he went down. That second time he right. picks the ball. Then he up actually from the possessed zone. it. It was the ball was in his left arm when his elbow hit. The ball clearly wasn't out of the end zone 100 percent so that's what they'll be looking at. Trey and the redshirt freshman reserve quarterback out of Dickinson Texas. And like a lot of other people, if you're a backup and you're either a true redshirt freshman, you're wondering if RG3, because this is his third year, he's a third year sophomore, is he staying? After further review, the receiving team possessed the ball in the end zone with possession, and a knee was on the ground before he fumbled the ball out into the field to play. Because of that, it will be a touchback. Texas will have the ball first and 10 at the 20 yard line. That is really interesting. How is that not, as you mentioned, a safety? Because he picked it up, possessed it, reversed his field. And, and, and initially, he, 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 he muffed the punt. Well, they're calling it a total muff. As I know we're going to look at it again, but he, he called it a muff. And that he never even possessed it when he went back to get it the second time. Boy, that, we'll, obviously, we'll go down and, and talk with the replay officials. Let's take another look at this. Art Bryles that's a gift clearly yeah beside himself about that absolute gift it's first and ten for Texas the governor very rarely calls but that is a reprieve Trey Newton pays for it big shot Phil Taylor over there he didn't possess it there okay doesn't possess it there third time they're saying it's the charm back there but after the free for all and he you know he touches it and then Baylor comes down and I don't think he was actually down without contact so clearly we're going to try to get some explanations on the last play. Gilbert for the tight end he's got a first down on a good grab by Greg Smith the senior from Montgomery Texas caught him in stride so the passes have been on early from Garrett Gilbert absolutely Garrett Gilbert has played well he was four four of seven coming into this drive now five of eight. And you think about two of those were dropped one of them in the end zone. He's playing probably the best football of the season thus far for the sophomore quarterback and Kirkendall grabbed a sure first down that would have been deep in better territory if not going to the end zone because he had beaten the man in the secondary Stevenson on the deep drop plenty of time for Gilbert who gets something out of it in fact he'll get up to the 39 close to the 40 about nine yards. 
Are there enough playmakers? And we'll get to that after this replay. Well, I tell you, I love the decision from Garrett Gilbert. He stays in the pocket, gets through his first read, gets through his second read, ultimately to his third, but then makes a decisive decision to run. Newt, breaking tackles. Man, they stand him up just short of the 46. Are there enough playmakers? And we've seen some great playmakers at the wide receiver position in recent years. Jordan Shipley gone, graduating last year. Williams, Childs, Davis, Kirkendall, Marquise Goodwin. Are there enough big play artists at wide receiver in Texas? Well, Malcolm Williams has got to step up. Uh, he, he's the guy with all the potential in the world. Number nine, the junior from Garland, got to step up and be that guy for Garrett Gilbert and this Texas offense. The 46 of first down, and Cody Johnson's in the backfield. For blocking purposes, down the sideline for Williams, and a flag. Ball thrown behind him, and that time a break for Texas. On the coverage, it was Tyler Stevenson once again. They're working with the true freshman. Pass interference on the defense, number 27. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. This is one of those scenarios that uh, as a defender, you're just completely in no man's land. It's kind of a back shoulder throw, really a poor throw from Garrett Gilbert, trying to throw it on the back shoulder of Malcolm Williams, but he ends up throwing it so poorly that when Williams stops, the defender has no choice but to run into him. So you're in no man's land at that point if you're Tyler Stevenson, true freshman. It's from the 39 of Baylor. Started back at the 20 of Texas, where it looked like Baylor either was going to have points or the football. And wouldn't it be bizarre if Texas goes 80 yards? Johnson looking for people to hit, obviously. And he's close to a first down. He's a load of 250, the junior from Walter, Texas. So Cody Johnson, kind of the K-Ron Johnson of Baylor for Baylor. The way Baylor uses K-Ron Johnson, their 300 pounder. Cody Johnson, a physical run. This is a mentality run. And for a team that has struggled to get that identity with their offensive line. I like the fact that they go to Cody Johnson and they just say, hey, hammer away, big fella. It'll be second in a yard. He'll stay there. And with Taylor on his back, will he get enough? Yep, he got it inside the 29. The way they've used Newton, Whitaker, and Cody Johnson, none of the three have an average of better than 40 yards per game. It's so, tough to get yeah. rid of. No continuity, really, from any one back. Especially the running back position is, is similar to quarterback or more similar than any other position on the field. You got to find a rhythm, and that's why sticking with one guy during a course of a series or a game is so important. Now Gilbert giving it off. It's Mike Davis on the end around. And the reverse, they stayed at home. Good job by the Baylor Bears. Chadwick over on that side. And again, a short gain of about three, where they were looking for a home run ball from the freshman. Out of Dallas's Skyline High School, two-time All-Stater. Too close together. They run the play, handing it to Cody Johnson with that Fargo reverse fake to, to Davis, and then they try to come right back, and then they fake the handoff to Johnson and give it on the Fargo reserve, uh, reverse to Davis. Those are too close together right there. Johnson, huge hole, and you need a big one for him to drive through. He's got another first down, down to the 18. Cody Johnson getting hot. And that's why he's getting the carries right now, but they will go with the hot back. Trey Newton, Cody Johnson, or Fozzie Whitaker. We've seen DJ Monroe already tonight. So Texas trying to find their rhythm in the run game. They're, they're finding that with Cody Johnson on this series. It's a two tight end set. Johnson scrambles his way straight up the gut inside the 15. How bizarre would this be after it looked like Baylor was a lot to take the lead? If Texas now five minutes into the second quarter gets points out of this drive with the 10th play coming up coaches on the emotion of the game. That's what Baylor's got to do. They've got to answer this drive both their neck and hold them to a field goal. Now it's second and short Johnson nothing really maybe a yard yard and a half. So the key third down to the drive coming up for the Longhorns and it always gets tougher inside the red zone. Especially on third down, Joel, and as a quarterback, this is where you have to be great as a quarterback. Third and over five yards in the red zone. You've got to step up and make a throw, and Garrett Gilbert will be asked to do that right here for Texas. Williams looks like single coverage, bottom of your screen. Middle of the field, way behind his intended target as he tried to get it to John Giles, almost like he guided it, directed it. That's been some of the criticism 
His feet get too wide apart. His base is lowered. He overstrides. And at that point, the ball gets into your palm a little bit. And you start to guide it. And Garrett Gilbert does that on that last third down. Again, those are the crucial situations that you got to step up and make a throw. And Garrett Gilbert has struggled doing that during the course of this season. 9.09 left of the half. Tucker already good from 26. And now 14 of 17 on the year. The 31 yarder. Nice draw. Use that on the first team. Six minutes gone by in the second quarter. And boy, is it going to be on the night before Halloween a nightmare for Art Riles after a drive and a call like that? See there. Down in College Station, a real good win at Texas A&M with a much-needed win. At least it looked like a win late in that game. And then out to the Pac-10, Arizona State and USC. College football Saturday, triple header next week. The numbers on the scoring drive, and what a bizarre situation yeah, on the really bump was. punt. really was. We talked with the replay booth, and they said because it was a punt and because the receiving team was tackled, and they, they, he, he said tackled in the end zone, they called it a touchback. Tucker gets into it. It'll be Mikhail Baker, the Bears' all-time leader in kickoff return yardage, and does he ever pay? Boy, did they get downhill, and I mean downhill in a hurry. Longhorns, Aaron Smith on top of the situation. Their most recent. Winning it over the USC Trojans. One of the great college football games ever at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And now Baylor stunned back at the road 18. Griffin low and behind, but what a great grab by Terrence Williams. Sophomore from Dallas. If he hits him in stride, boy, he's got the seam. They're calling it incomplete Did now. They, the, he put it down. The back yeah. official. He was a little bit low and away on the backside. And is it a catch or not? He sold it. Look. Oh, that's, yeah, a that's a catch. That's a catch. Hold Absolutely. up. Hold up. Yeah, hold yeah, it up. Hold it up. There we go. Can I throw my challenge flag from up here? <laughs> I, wear, I wear goggles, but it looked like a catch. I tell you what, great concentration from Terrence Williams. Guy with three touchdowns on the year. Boy, going down not only onto the shoelaces, Joel, but behind him. I mean, contorts his body all the way behind him and goes all the way down is able to pull this thing off the turf that's a great look with the yes. XMO camera and this will be overturned for a completion and Baylor will be in business with a first down boy what concentration that's a great catch right there sorry Bryles wondering what's it gonna take I already said it was a win-win in the last play for art you know it's the eve of Halloween <laughs> when you get burned on a play like that I guess I shouldn't say anything about this review you a Halloween guy? Not really, no. Never been. I love the candy, though. <laughs> and all the kids, I tell you what, my nephews are excited. So first, thing I, nephews. first thing I asked my wife, what'd you get? <laughs> Lots of Snickers? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get plenty that I like. 6-3, Texas, 8.51 to play in the first half. Paydays, Snickers, Baby Ruth, M&M's with peanuts. See, now you're just making me hungry. It's back at the 18, but it should be a first down. Actually, if I say it's a first down, play stands is called on the field. <laughs> Good numbers for Williams. I, I don't really understand why it's taken this long. It was a pretty clear, uh, crystal clear play, which means that we're just killing Baylor now with our speculation. After further review, the ruling on the field is that the receiver had a completed catch. Baylor will have the ball first and 10. At the 31 yard line. Good call. They got it right. That's rare for the guys in the first row here. Jeff McElroy, Dave Burchette. Good pictures. Good pictures from our guys. And they hold up. Art Bryles in disbelief. It'll be first down to the 31. And a little screen action on the outside. Reese. You heard him holler, hold him, hold him. He's out to the 36, gain of five. 
Yeah, Texas uh, on their sidelines, they were dying for a holding call yep. on Lanier Sampson. He had the jersey of Curtis Brown, the corner. And when Brown was unable to turn back on the outside and Baylor gained the edge, they were dying for a flag. Yeah, and it was a legitimate potter from the sideline, as you saw. So second and five. Banner averaging 35 a game, only three so far. A little more than eight to play in the half. Griffin. Like a Barishnikov back there. And now puts it on the ground. Look out. Okafor, who gets it? Okafor had the first shot. And one of the lugs up front. Good job by Banner's offensive line. Coming away with the football. Kaufold, Cameron Kaufold. And check it, not 71, but Philip Blake, the alert junior center from Toronto. 74, not 71. Robert Griffin has all day to throw. Tries to step back and throw it a second knee? down time. But he's just running. It just slips out of his hand. And Texas unable to capitalize. That's Keenan Robinson, terrific outside linebacker. Had a chance late. Unable to get on the football. And Baylor has some life, even though it's third and ten. Boy, that ball has got to be recovered by Texas. That's why they've struggled so much gaining turnovers. They just have not made plays the entire season. It was first Alex Okafor, and Keenan Robinson, he's got to go down on top of it. He tried to pick it up and run with it. Now, Griffin in trouble and on his way down. The sack. And what a job coming up and making the play. Eddie Jones, the senior from Kilgore, Texas. And He's had just a few surgeries, hasn't he? He has persevered, though, to be playing at this level. Lead the team in sacks with five. Gets to the quarterback. You can see why he's got such a great motor, and he understands how to play with leverage. He's not the tallest guy in the world, so at 6'3", 260, he can play with better leverage than most of the offensive tackles and use that to his advantage to gain that edge and get to the quarterback. Now let's see if Curtis Brown does a better job of hanging under the football this time. Epperson in. He sent out a beauty last time. And another one. Good hang time. Brown took it up high. And I'm talking about high on his chest and making a miss uh, along the sideline across the 45 out to the midfield stripe. So I like it. Mac Brown goes right back with his senior cornerback Curtis Brown after he muffed it, put it on the ground, and they got a break on the call. And Brown rewarded him. How many of these guys are out there tonight? It's a popular contest. <laughs> <laughs> He's up a tree without a banana. Now, on the end around, good run by Monroe. They hit him in stride. And about seven, make it eight, turning the corner. DJ Monroe, the sophomore from Angleton, Texas at 5'9", 170 pounds. And I talk about field position. This starts at the Texas 49, so three of their four drives have started at their own 49 or better. They should have some points. Only six on the board, though. Wow, well, those drop passes earlier in the game. You know, they really hurt Garrett Gilbert. Hasn't found a rhythm since. Now, new good yardage for the first down. If he pops it towards the sideline, it may go for big, big yardage. Chris Francis, the linebacker, brings him down out of Cedar Hill, Texas, a senior. And our first and ten line, all brought to you by Phillips Televisions. It's down to the 38. A little waggle action. Looking for Williams, batted away. And actually, John Tiles, good read by Francis. So whatever you do, don't lighten up, Chris. This is a poor decision by Garrett Gilbert. They get that big run action. The defensive end crashes all the way down. And as the linebacker drifts back, that's where you have to run the football if you're Garrett Gilbert. There has to be a threat. When you have a run pass option on the outside, you have to show them that you have the ability and will make the decision to take off and run, or else they will dip back into coverage like you saw Lander do on the last play, ultimately tipping that ball away. Very tough throw to try to throw it over that linebacker. Just take the eight yards they were giving you with the run. Gilbert on second and ten out of the gun. Dancing. And a good job by Newton. They get it down to the 33. Gain of about five. But again, that mid-range third down play. Last time Gilbert guided the ball. But it was in the 
red zone. You know, there was a lot of congestion over the middle. Well, they've gotten their rhythm running the football. They've done a nice job. Their offensive line playing physical. But now you're in that position where, as a quarterback, if you're going to score points and if you're going to be efficient, you got to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike to your wide receiver. And on the outside, you got to catch the football. Only 25% on their third down tries. Newton, a little crease, and it closed in a hurry. And then the guy you were just talking about came up to clean up, and that's Byron Lander. Boy, a third and five try to run the ball you either think it's four down territory and with Gilbert looking over to the sidelines they very might go for this very well might go for this no I, I think Tucker might run on the field but that's that's showing me a little bit of a lack of confidence in your offense running it on third and five Joel you you've got to allow your quarterback to sit in there and make a play and move the chains well I think it goes back to what Max said last week he thought his quarterback was pressing I don't see that tonight though he's played pretty well he just had a couple of drops he said it, the game kind of speeded up on Garrett Gilbert for the first time this year to that extent. Tucker now a 49-yard attempt, and boy, that's good from about 60. Wow. Justin Tucker, get it out of your system. Junior from Austin Westlake High School, a 49-yarder, easily done. Nine free Longhorn. to seize the moment. Yeah, bowl eligible for the first time since 95. The AP top 25 for the first time since 93. Coaches poll first time since 95. A lot of firsts, and it's yeah. good to see for the Baylor Bears. Well, I, I thought last year they were going to have a year like this with Griffin back after that sensational freshman year. And Joel, it just happened a year late after that knee injury to Robert Griffin a, a season ago. It's Baker. Bringing it back. And boy, Mikhail Baker. Nifty moves to make a miss out across the 30 to the 31. Well, Baylor had 102 yards of total offense at the end of the first 15 minutes of play. They're at 104. They have been shut down completely in the second quarter. And this is one of the best offensive units in the nation. Yep. Let's see if they get a little confidence, a little momentum going into the locker room with 406 to play. Well, remember, it's strength on strength. This is the fifth-ranked passing offense in the country against the second-ranked passing defense in the country. And right now, Texas is winning those battles, although you have to credit Baylor's defense because this lead should probably be bigger for Texas because of the breaks that they've gotten and the turnovers that they've gotten early in this game. It's Finley. He was going early, and he's going again. Barely tripped up. Out to the 38. Gain of seven. The zone read and Finley always doing a nice job of finding the seam and getting north and south in a hurry. That's one of the reasons why he's been so effective for Baylor this season, especially in the last couple of games. 140 plus yards against Colorado and then that school record a week ago against Kansas State when he rushed for 250 yards. On a second and three, zone read Griffin. Man, will it be a double pass? No. Kendall Wright trying to make it happen. And it won't work. Losing yardage. The junior wide receiver, he threw it first. It was backwards. Yeah, it, it was kind of a triple option type of play. You got the zone read going on initially. And then based on what the outside linebacker is going to do, you're going to have a wide receiver option as well if you're Robert Griffin. The problem is Texas too fast. They play well too. Uh, they play, play well in space. And Sam Macho stayed at home and strung the play out horizontally, allowing his buddy in the white hats to get there and tackle the ball carrier. Sam Acho is the one with the penetration. Big number 81. Baylor, three of five of the third down tries. Make it three of six. Griffin needs about six and a half, seven. And a little stop. Didn't work. And what a hit. The completion is good, but coming up for the Longhorns. It was Blake Gooding in the safety, the junior from Leander, Texas. And there is about a yard short. And this is where we start talking about football IQ because Terrence Williams has to understand where the sticks are. And that route, a hook route on the inside, has got to go for a first down. you got to get yourself across the chains. Griffin coming up in a hurry. And I don't think he got it. It'll depend upon the spot. He nudged it across the 40. He got a great spot, though. Now, with a, who gets the ball? Yeah, it looks like he's going to have it with the nose of the football right at the 41. That's a full yard that they're trying to get. And from that replay, it looks like he might be a little short. It's going to depend on the spot. Yeah, he got it. That last little lunge, and don't forget he's not on the ground. He's on bodies. 
<laughs> so uh, they uh, the forward progress was still there for Robert Griffin and he made the most of it he just had to get the nodes of the football on the 41 and I think he did Two ten to play in the half as they bring in the chains risky fourth down you know you're still in your territory under two and a half minutes boy and just getting the first down by about a third of the football and the risk is rewarded Baylor will stay on the field offensively but that was a great opportunity for Texas to get off the field and give their offense the ball in plus territory you know in Baylor territory that would have been a, a, another break for Texas Baylor playing with fire here but able to stay on the field all three timeouts remaining for both Baylor and Texas deep drop after the play fake and it's going to be a holding call great penetration by Keiston Randall it seems like this year when I've watched film Randall has got holding on the offense number 63 10 yard penalty first down that's John Jones he's gotten good heat on the quarterback maybe the run game isn't there for the underneath tackle but boy he he shoots a gap well for a physical player like Keiston Randall the one thing that you can always do is have a high motor keep staying after the quarterback don't stop when you're held because it's that type of motion when you're running and being held that will always draw a flag so a terrific play inside from Keiston Randall to draw that flag and now Bel Baylor well behind the chains if I'm Baylor I'm just looking for half of this back just get six or seven here and put yourself in some manageable situations you never try to go for it all back on a first and 20 scenario three wide receivers setting up for Robert Griffin out of the gun Finley in the backfield with him at yeah, first and 20 Finley torpedoed after a gain of about two and you got to think maybe a timeout from Texas too as we head down to Jim Knox all right Joel you know one thing the Baylor Bears are looking at right here is do not make mistakes don't turn the ball over and something the Baylor coach is trying to instill in Robert Griffin the motto being needy and not greedy just be smart allow your guys to make plays that's what Griffin has done so far it's about 19 they need for the first down on second down and if they don't get a thing then you could potentially see a timeout used by Texas little screen Finley good call and the ball pops free out of bounds shot from Christian Scott the safety a junior out of skyline high in Dallas I like to call it's a safe call when you're backed up well behind the chains and if you can dial it up against an aggressive defense a lot of times you can gain a lot of yards Finley gets going but Christian Scott filling in the alley inside out keeping his hat on the ball and late in the play it pops out but out of bounds and now a third and ten situation for Baylor Robert Griffin at one minute left in this half you do not want to make a mistake and throw the ball late or force it over the middle all the timeouts up for both still here comes the heat on Griffin and there goes Williams down the middle untouched little slant Broke the tackle, touchdown Baylor. 59 yards for Terrence Williams. How quickly it can happen with the Baylor Bears and Robert Griffin. Baylor's success offensively is based on space and athleticism. And when you get a one on one situation, all you got to do is break one tackle on the outside. And you got the ability to take it all the way to the end zone. And Terrence Williams with a terrific catch using his hands not allowing the ball to get to the body and takes it all the way 59 and now the extra point tacked on and Baylor the quick strike after they were backed up behind the chains seven plays 69 yards and a gutsy call on fourth down pays off for Art Bryles give him credit because all of a sudden it could be as you mentioned a very short field for Texas if they got the stop instead now a little surge of energy for Baylor at the end of the first half Williams fourth touchdown of the season from Robert Griffin who now ties the Baylor record for touchdowns in a career and this ball was a strike on third down the quarterback has got to make a play he sees the pressure he stands in knows he's going to get hit 
delivers the ball on the frame of Terrence Williams, and then it's mono a mono. He breaks a tackle, and he was gone. As soon as that tackle was broken, you could see it from up here, Joel. There was nobody left. And it's tough for a safety, let's face it, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Especially when that blitz goes, because you, you know you're the last line of defense. You don't know whether to play the ball or play the man. It's third down, it's third and 10. You don't want to get beat. Terrence Williams, got to credit him. Continuing to, to run with high knees, breaking the tackle, but Griffin started out with a terrific pass. It'll be Malcolm Williams on the far side, a little hooch kick, short field again, and Williams up to the 38. Interesting. 39 seconds left and enough time to get into field goal territory. Yeah, I gotta say, you, you cannot pooch the ball inside of a minute because now you're allowing them to potentially go down and kick a field goal. We saw Justin Tucker from 49. He kicked it over the uprights. I mean, he could make it from 50 if he really needs it. 55, maybe even 60. Our guys, Rick Renner and Gary Reasons coming up. McDonald's halftime report in 39 seconds. Well, maybe a few minutes and 39 seconds. So stick around. Highlights from around the Big 12 today. Well, it was a different story in Waco last year without Robert Griffin. At halftime last year in Waco, it was 40 to nothing, Texas. Griffin makes just a slight difference. Just a little. Bozzie Whitaker in the backfield. Gilbert out of the gun. All three timeouts. Can they make something happen? What are they? And he's going to throw at the feet of DJ Monroe. He wanted to set up a screen, and it was well diagnosed by Baylor. Another safe play call from Greg Davis, the Texas offensive coordinator. And in a two-minute situation, a defensive coordinator will always alert his ball club of two things. One, watch the football, and two, be aware of the screen pass in the front seven because that's the play that is usually utilized to get something going or get the first first down. So Baylor sniffing it out beautifully on the first play, and now Texas with a long second and ten. It's at the 39. Playing it safe. Trey Newton scrambling his way up the middle. He's got a first down, stops the clock, but if I'm Texas, I use one of my three timeouts here. 27 seconds left. Clock is going to start, and Texas will call a timeout. They've got two still up there. So the first half, it has been an interesting one for the Longhorns. First of all, they got a huge break on a muff punt, where it looked like Baylor was going to have potentially the ball deep in Texas territory. Instead, it turned out to be a field goal going the other way for the Longhorns. And our sprint now recap. Robert Griffin losing the ball a couple of times early in this game. Yeah, Texas got away there with a, with a trip from Sam Ocho. They went down the field, and Matthews just dropped it. That was a great pass from Garrett Gilbert. Griffin had a second down pass, batted away in the inside by Vicario. And then this is that crazy play. We thought this was going to be a, a safety or something that was going on. But then Baylor coming back late in the half on third down. And in the face of the pressure, Robert Griffin delivers a strike to Terrence Williams as he takes it 59 yards for a touchdown. Robert Griffin's 38th in his career, tying the Baylor mark. It'll be second, make it first and 10. Gilbert. Flushed out of the pocket. And out in the flat. It's taken in by Whitaker. Short game, but saving a timeout, stopping the clock at the 45. So the first half, basically, great field position for the Texas Longhorns, and they failed to capitalize, settling for three field goals. Well, in a two-minute situation, this is why you do not pooch kick or, or hit that little floater over to the sidelines. All Texas really needed to do was go 21 yards. They started on their 39. I believe they only need four more yards to run Justin Tucker out there for about a 55 or 56-yard field goal, and we can see he has the leg based on the kick earlier in the game. Protection holds up for Gilbert, but now it's deflected and falls incomplete. Break for Texas. It'll bring up third and four, though. As you said, they know they need still a few more yards with 16 seconds left. Active hands in the front four for Baylor. Phil Taylor. Big Phil Taylor, 340 pounds, 6'4", gets his hands up, gets his big mitts on the football. Is able to bat it down. That's exactly what you need. Anytime your defensive line can make a play in a two-minute situation, boy, that is a huge plus. How about a vertical at 340? <laughs> that's, that's athletic. <laughs> now on third down, critical. Gilbert can run for it. Instead, he'll throw for it, and he gets the first down. Going down to a knee, it should be down already. And it will be on the grab by John Childs. Texas should use another timeout right here. They've got two on the board. 21 yards on the reception. 
Catches it with his knee down. That's ruled down, but a strike from Garrett Gilbert. I like how he steps up in the pocket, and that is a disciplined route from John Childs. Being at the throw spot on time, one or two yards outside of the hash. That's what Garrett Gilbert is expecting from the pocket. That's where Childs ends up at the conclusion of the play. And now Mac Brown's team is set up for yet another field goal. But it could pay off that his knee went down because they could take one shot of the end zone potentially. Sure. A quick one and still get a field goal attempt out of it if he's running and the play is still going. He may take it down to three or two seconds before they get the stoppage and a timeout on the board. So it may be two snaps, and it may be another break for Texas that he caught it with a knee down. Well, they're, they're running Justin Tucker out wow. now. Would you try a fade? Which uh, I, I don't believe that they would fake this. Why would you call a timeout with eight seconds? Why not dwindle this down to two seconds before taking the timeout after the clock is wound so that Baylor doesn't have an ability on the kickoff to make a play? It'll be a 40-yard attempt by Tucker who's three for three tonight just hit a 49 yarder and this one on target again Texas has the lead with three seconds left in the half I just thought maybe a fade a quick release fade down the sideline well and if you wanted to kick it like I said just let the clock dwindle down so that you do not have to kick the ball off Baylor is explosive they're very athletic and now you're forcing 11 guys to go out on the field and make a play so that they don't give up points from Baylor and listen I know it's a low percentage to run a kickback but why not just not give them that opportunity when you have it in your control let the clock start after the change are set dwindle down to two take your time out kick the field goal run into your locker but it goes back again to pooching the kick yeah absolutely and a short field so often in the first half but as you can see the frustration from the sideline Mac Brown's happy he's on top by two uh, but he knows he should have at least a touchdown or two with the field position they've enjoyed it allowed Texas to use everything in their playbook you know they were able to run the ball even in that series get a first down the clock stop take a timeout and yet they still had the ability to just get to that 40 yard line again rather than trying to kick it all the way deep get them back to the 20 where then they would have to go 40 yards in order to get into field goal range you allow them to go only 21 yards that's a mistake from Baylor keep it on the ground and the up man will take it and that is going to do it for the half as Joel Corbel picked it up for the Baylor Bears so we're all even basically it's a 12 10 lead but with somebody ex as explosive as Robert Griffin Texas fortunate they are up by two could have had touchdowns, so settled and got four field goals as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thanks, Joel. Coach, you got to be happy the way your team responded after that quick strike by Robert Griffin. You came back, got the go-ahead field goal. We are, Jim. We're playing hard. Baylor's playing hard. It's a great football game. Kind of reminds you of the old Southwest Conference as you look back, doesn't it? Uh, what, what we saw is we blitzed on third and ten. Very little time left. We were going to call timeout after that play and hope we could get a drive at the end. We missed the tackle. Great play by Baylor. Really proud our guys responded and came back and got three points. We've still got to score some touchdowns to win. They're going to score some points. We've gotten down there. We're moving the ball, but we got to make some plays when we get in the red zone. All right, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Should be a good one in the second half. Half time in Austin, Texas. Texas leading Baylor 12 to 10. Up next, McDonald's halftime show with Rick Renner and Gary Reasons right after this quick timeout. Saw a little bit of everything in the first 30 minutes of play and a big showdown in the Big 12 South has Texas on top over the Baylor Bears by 2, 12, 10. Welcome back once again, Joel Klatt, Joel Myers, Jim Knox down to the sideline. Uh, wasted opportunities. They didn't capitalize Texas in the first 30 minutes of play. And then a lack of balance in the first half for Baylor. Well, and, and Baylor had been rushing the football very effectively coming into this game, but you got to credit Texas's defense and their speed on the outside. They're able to cover it in space, and they've limited the big play except for one. That's that Baylor touchdown that was scored. But I have a feeling now in the second half, you're going to start to see Baylor try to run the football and assert themselves in the running game just a little bit more. Only nine yards uh, rushing but for Texas, they've had their opportunities to both gain turnovers and score points, and they've done neither. So they've got to take advantage of those opportunities and start making some plays in the second half. Looking at the Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff leaders. And the guys who made the plays, Robert Griffin, of course, with that big pass to Terrence Williams. But maybe the lack of big play hurt Texas more than anything else. The explosive play. 
So we are ready for the start of the second half of the Longhorns. Who deferred, took their option to the second half, will have it. You see the finish strong for the Baylor Bears. Is that going to be the case? They're down by two. DJ Monroe waits for the Parks kick, and now they go deep after the two kind of pooch in the first half that did work and gave Texas short fields. A couple of minutes ago, Jim Knox caught up with Art Bryles. Coach, just about dead even. You guys trail by two and a half. You're doing a nice job keeping the Longhorns out of the end zone. What'd you tell your team at the break? Well, we, you know, we got to just play better. We, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot a little bit offensively. I think our defense is really playing well. And we got to get better field position. They've had good field position. We hadn't. We got to swing that part of it. We got to have a big stop right here to start the second half, get the ball back, and go score. All right, thanks for the time. All right, let's see if the defense does hold up. And what about adjustments as well for Greg Davis and his offensive unit with Garrett Gilbert at quarterback? And Gilbert in the first half, 7 of 14, 52 yards. Now maneuvering his way out of the edge and paying for it. What a pop by Francis on Trey Newton and Leander over there. And Byron Lander, rather, the strong safety. His nickname, and it's appropriate, it is Crash. Francis was there as well. And Lander, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago against Colorado with an impressive hit on the first play of this half. Gilbert waiting for Kirkendall to turn around. It's a short game beyond the 25 with a flag late. Hit was made by Mikhail Baker out to the 26. Personal foul, face mask on the defense number five. 15-yard penalty, first up. Well, that's a backbreaker instead of third and four. Big Markov early. Downstairs, Jim Knox, what's the latest? Uh, some bad news for the Longhorns to start this second half. Big offensive lineman Michael Yui out the rest of the game with a knee injury. That's going to hurt him. That's his starting left guard, the senior, a two-year starter out of Kilgore, Texas. So he's gone. Thomas Ashcraft setting up there right now. 6'5", 315-pound redshirt freshman from Cedar Hill, Texas. First down for the 41 after the mark off. Newton can't slip. The initial stop. Man. He'll go down after maybe a yard at the most. So it now Thomas Ash yep. and Thomas Ashcraft has got to step in and he's got to fill in for Michael Huey, who had been playing the best football on the offensive line for the Texas Longhorns. And this was an offense that was running the ball well in the first half. Can they establish the same continuity with the red shirt freshman in at guard? It'll be second and nine. Little stunt up front. And over the middle, it's out of the backfield. Newton. Man, he's got the first down across the 49, down to the 48. Now, remember, when we talk about adjustments, Banner has adjusted defensively all year long very effectively. And this is what I call a Texas route. You fake like you're going to the flat if you're Trey Newton, and you come back to that middle of the field. It's called Texas because you're going to get in the middle of the field, and that's where you're going to catch the ball in the space, the big area. Trey Newton with a very effective route. And you got to credit Garrett Gilbert because he's coming back, and he looks very poised to start this second half. They've got Cody Johnson taking over in the backfield. They're big guy. 250-pound running back. And on the play fake. And a couple. Gilbert out of the edge. Up for grabs because he overshot Malcolm Williams. And a break that nobody was in the neighborhood. And I bring up the adjustments by Baylor all year long because they've only given up an on average eight points a game in the second half. They've only allowed 22 for the game, but 14 in the first half. So eight in the second half. And that tells you something about your staff and making those adjustments. Well, Art Bryles is a heck of a coach. And, and the fact that Baylor is now ranked since the first time in the AP since 93, first time in the coaches poll since 95, you know that this guy has had his work cut out for him at Baylor, and he's doing a heck of a job this season with the Bears. On second and 10, it'll be Gilbert, zone read, and Garrett Gilbert breaks the tackle down the sideline, gets another block from Williams and out of bounds. So when you least suspect it, a guy that does not run the football all that much, he pulls off the surprise. 25 yards. I love Greg Davis giving Gilbert the option. They've just run the ball so effectively. The defensive end crashing down, fakes out even our camera guys, and then Gilbert on the edge showing you some athleticism, and now Texas trying to up the speed of the game, the tempo of the game at the line of scrimmage all already. Double tight end, man, the load. Tony Johnson, better than 250, 255. Up the middle, powers his way for three. Started back at the 20. Opening drive of the second half. Joel Myers, Joel Platt, Jim Knox in Austin, Texas. 
And Garrett Gilbert, can he find some momentum after the failures of the first half? Hitting only 50% of his passes and failing to take advantage, even Mac Brown said it, of great field position. Well, this is exactly what Art Bryles did not want to see, telling Jim Knox that he needs his defense to get off the field and provide the Baylor offense with some field position. Texas has gone right down the field now, entering the red zone. Holding him up. And off his wide receiver, it ain't alive. The wide out, Marquise Goodwin on that side. It was a hot one. He turned around, and it was up around his backs. This is a primary example of a young quarterback not understanding the back shoulder throw. And if we freeze it right there, when the wide receiver is pressed all the way to the sideline by the defensive back, that ball's got to be thrown on the back shoulder so that he can turn, give his frame to the quarterback, rather than lead up the field. That's too hard. There's, there's too little of a space to catch the ball as a wide receiver and throw the ball as a quarterback. Garrett Gilbert will start learning that as his career moves on. Third and seven, here comes the heat. He can run for the first down. Now can he get to the goal line to the five? Yes, touchdown, Texas. Gilbert with runs of 25 and 20 yards. Key the opening drive of the second half of the Longhorns. This is exactly what Texas needed. Is someone to step up and make a play. Baylor gets burned on the blitz. They're running the 23 Mike coverage or two Tampa when the Mike linebacker runs with the vertical route in the middle of the field. And as soon as he vacates his area, the quarterback has all sorts of daylight to run and Gilbert ultimately gets in the end zone. Justin Tucker for the point after and now a nine point lead the biggest to the game for the Longhorns, trying to snap a two-game home field losing streak. How many minutes of the second half? The future of features is now. Ready? Ready. Can you believe this? <gasps> FX Movie Channel in HD. Presented with limited commercial interruptions. This ain't reality TV! FXM. Available in your area. Go to GetFXM.com. Big 12 College Football Saturday brought to you by McDonald's. Stop in and enjoy the McDouble on McDonald's dollar menu at participating locations. I'm loving it. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Steel Outdoor Power Equipment for dependable chainsaws, lightweight blowers, visit SealDealers.com. And by Priority Mail Flat Rate Boxes, only from the Postal Service. The State Capitol of Boston, Texas, and on the night before Halloween. In the Longhorns' house, Garrett Gilbert, 67 yards passing, 63 rushing. It is a very strange Halloween Eve. They need him to step up. Every, there's a point in every young quarterback's career where you got to step up and be a leader. And maybe this is that point or juncture for Garrett Gilbert. Notches in your belt, scoring the touchdown, leading your team down the field. Baker, a serious collision. Just past the 15. Seismologists are giving us an update. It's out to the 17, maybe the 18. And that's where Baylor is going to have their first drive of the second half. And unfortunately, you can see the results of that. And the drives for the Baylor Bears, well, and Art Bryle said it, it the field position for Texas was sensational. Yeah. Look where Baylor started with the football. Constantly having to drive 80, 80 plus yards. You know, 70 yards. And That's tough to do as an offense, especially one that likes to strike in a hurry on with big plays. And where are they starting now? 82 yards away from pay dirt and off the edge. Devontae John Johnson. Devontae John Johnson, the sophomore from Nederland, Texas. Boy, he edged up. He was going to come. And then he went untouched to the quarterback, Griffin. Well, and he keeps his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. That's what you got to do against the zone read. Set up Acho. Top side. Always watch for 81, the kind of year he is having. It'll be second and 11. 
Nothing doing for Finley, but he's not stopping on the play. Van Broek tackles across the 21. He was fortunate to get about four from the 17 out to the 21. The second effort from Jay Finley. You can tell that defensive front for Texas, they are not budging an inch. They're winning the line of scrimmage, Ooh. making it awful tough for Finley to gain yards. But the second effort, he does gain some yards. But now Griffin's got to make a play. Empty in the backfield for Robert Griffin. And let's see if he calls his own number once they go downfield. And let's expect Texas to sit in zone coverage. Remember the last third down opportunity they had, they blitzed, and that's when Griffin found Terrence Williams for the touchdown on a 59-yard completion. Now deep into the play clock. It's only a three-man rush on Griffin. Acho flushed him out. And wide open is Williams. Intercepted. Picked off. Christian Scott gets it. Coming the other way with a flag on the play. Williams was behind. Christian Scott, it was underthrown. Man, Texas is going to have it. It might come back because of a block after the pick. But it was definitely underthrown for Williams. Going to have a block in the back, but this is going to be Texas ball. Great play on the ball by Christian Scott. An underthrown ball that Robert Griffin is going to want to have back because he had Terrence Williams wide open deep down the middle of the field, right next to the numbers. And he just underthrew him. Christian Scott, though, good closing speed. Two getting fouls that pick. against Texas on the play. During the return, block in the back, number eight, Texas. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on Texas number nine. That foul will be enforced half the distance of the goal. First down. So Johnson had a sack. It's a personal foul. Chucky Brown block in the back. Man, way back is going to be Texas, but they've got the football. And Griffin, as he gets out of the pocket, Williams is wide open. Griffin just didn't have enough on the football. That's how you saw the block in the back, and then at the end of the play, Giovanni Johnson, the sophomore from Nederland, comes in with a late hit. So a very promising return from Christian Scott after the pick, and great field positions coming all the way back inside Texas's own red zone. They'll start from the 15-yard line. Well, the last drive, yeah, I mean, it's stranger than fiction. 80-yard touchdown drive, and Garrett Gilbert accounted for 45 of the 80 on the ground. Well, I talked about leadership and how you got to earn your stripes as a young quarterback, and those are the stripes that he's earning. You run in for a touchdown, you get a big third down, and now when you step in front of those other 10 individuals, they respect you all the much more. Play fake, deep drop, and going for the home run ball, looking for Williams. Grab his made. Was he in bounds or not? They're saying yes, it is a catch. Mel Check that. Kirkendall on the far side. 46 yards. Stepping under himself. The back foot comes right under his body, allows his whole body to get on top of his left foot. That means the ball is going to come down with a nice arc on the outside. And James Kirkendall brings it in. Great concentration the Willie Mays style catch right over his shoulder It'll with be... a foot in bounds I'm sure that they'll probably right, review this it is funny how things work though in the first half he dropped one that would have been a first down and could have gone for a big gainer and then makes the really difficult catch here it's just gonna yeah both are be in. determined of when he gained possession I don't think he did when his right foot was on the ground, but he definitely had possession when the left foot came down. So this will stand the 46-yard gain for Texas. And this is exactly what they need, Joel. We talked about the lack of plays or playmakers on the outside. And now Garrett Gilbert steps up with a couple of long runs, gets into the end zone. And they come right back, and they allow the guy with the hot hand to get in the pocket and throw it down the field. And Kirkendall steps up with a sensational catch on the sideline. Well, he, he's got a big arm. There's no question. He can put it downfield. That yep. was a long throw by Garrett Gilbert. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed as a completed catch. First down. Good throw by Garrett Gilbert. If you were wondering about the guy that kind of looked like Chase McCoy, and he had McCoy on his back, that was Case McCoy, first-year freshman. Now, that's his younger brother. There he is. No well, resemblance at all. <laughs> on the field earlier when uh, Big Brother got his number retired. That's great. Name up in the stadium. That's uh, 
That's big shoes to fill right there. That's what that is. And he wanted to be here in Austin. Don't blame him. From the 40. Dead ball foul. And a false start coming up against the Longhorns. False start on the offense. Number 79. Five yard penalty. First down. And you know, what an honor for Colt McCoy before the game. We showed you very early tonight the presentation. There is only five others. Number 20, Earl Campbell. Number 22, Bobby Lane. Number 60, Tommy Nobis. Number 34, Ricky Williamson. Most recent before Colt McCoy. The guy who preceded him. Number 10, Vince Young. Well, you talk about big shoes to fill. Garrett Gilbert has taken snaps at the University of Texas where the last two starting quarterbacks have their name in the stadium. <laughs> Real, no pressure. No. Now, Gilbert making a miss out of the backfield following his block over to the left side. Lander. We got him the strong safety, but again, good awareness and reading. And the first move was a nifty one to the backfield. And a decisive run. Almost looks like a quarterback draw with the lineman releasing downfield, and that's exactly what it was. Gilbert, the hottest rusher, and that's who they're going to follow right now. Need two. And Newton can't bounce away. He'll be dropped. So no gain. In fact, about a half a yard loss. It'll bring up third, three, three and a half. Jim Knox, what's new? Well, something Garrett Gilbert that Mac Brown wanted him to do is be more emotional, take charge, be a leader. And this game, although he's had a couple of misfires, he's done just that. He's slapping his offensive lineman on the shoulder pads. He's getting in their face. He's charging them up. So far, so good for Garrett Gilbert as far as getting an emotional charge tonight. Well, he grew up in the game. There's no question about that. And Newton. Had that crease closed in a hurry. Phil Taylor, that's a load on back on your back. 350 pounder. Transfer from Penn State at 6'4, 350. And a decision. You go for about a 49, 50 yard field goal try. We've seen the accuracy in the distance of Justin Tucker. Or you try to really pick up your team if you gain the two, two and a half yards and get the first down. Well, if you tell me when you run it on third down, you're going for it on fourth. It's too safe of a play call to not come back and try to move the sticks here. And they get him offside. They'll go for it. Now Gilbert and the defensive back was pushed down. It'll come back. The call against Malcolm Williams. Pass interference on the offense, number nine. 15-yard penalty. Fourth down. And, and it wasn't obvious. <laughs> it's as obvious as it gets on the bottom of your screen. The left hand from Williams pushing off the cornerback from Baylor. And not only did they not get the conversion there on fourth down, but now you're moved back into a position where you can't even try a field goal. It would be too long a field goal now with the ball all the way back at the 48 yard line. So now, again, mistakes taking potential points off the board. You could have kicked a field goal. As it was, you go for it on fourth down. Lack of discipline from Williams. He's got to understand he cannot extend his arm like that because that will be called 100% of the time. And now Texas has to punt. They have to play more consistently. Chris Burke waiting for the punt. And it dies. Will it? No. Got into the end zone. Valiant attempt downfield by who else? Does Sam Acho have a motor? <laughs> He's all over the field. Surprise, he doesn't play on offense, too. It's the Longhorns by nine. To run, and he makes a decisive decision and takes off and goes for the corner of the end zone, ultimately getting in. This guy is stepping up. He's run the football extremely well so far in this game. Griffin trying to get out of the edge. Can't turn the corner thanks to the play of Keenan Robinson, the junior from Plano. He leads the Longhorns in stops, and you can understand why with that kind of speed on the outside. That's exactly what hurts Baylor's offense. Their, their offense is predicated on being faster than you in one-on-one -on -one situations. And when you got a linebacker who can go up and stop Robert Griffin, that is a huge plus. It's one of the reasons played so good against Nebraska, and now they're playing well against Baylor. Second and 17, dump off. And that's all it was. That was the last option. Kendall right over there on the far side. And got it out to the 17. 
So third and long is our first and ten line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. And the field position problems continue for Baylor. They've only had one drive tonight that has started outside of their own 20. Not only field position, but them being behind the sticks. They're constantly in a, in a second and 15 or third and long situation. It's a Luby. The H back in motion. Third and 13. And Griffin wide open. Over his shoots his intended target. And it was. The guy who caught the big one, Terrence Williams, who went the distance at the end of the first half for 59 yards. So on the fly, he can motor. And he was available again, a miss by Robert Griffin. Yeah, another miss, and he's going to be frustrated with himself because he had Williams wide open. Throwing a deep ball in football is just like shooting a three-pointer in basketball. you got to keep your eyes on the rim or the receiver. As soon as your eyes go up to the ball, the trajectory of the ball flattens out, and it's harder for you to hit that deep route because your margin for error decreases. Epperson into punt. Low-line driver, turnable one, but Curtis Brown can't get up there to take it. He'll take it on one hop. Man, take a shot at about the 42 when we come back. That's where Texas is going to have the football outside of their own 40 again. Same story. Short field for the Longhorns, long one for the Bears. 538 to play in the third after the break. Rick Renner joins us in Academy Sports and Outdoors game break with the Longhorns up by nine. I want to. Saw it coming, didn't you? DJ Monroe. For Marquise Goodwin, the sophomore from Garland, and a first down to the 33 for 26. And, and was it Whitaker who threw it? Yes, not 28, 6, 28. They've been able to run the ball so effectively that that's when a play like that works when you're drawing that whole defense up the line of scrimmage. Now Gilbert, little pump fake, and throws it away. And that is a good play to go to the next down. Yeah, you bet. Uh, we used to call it, you know, every coach has their adage, the quarterback coach. We used to call it, don't go broke, taking a profit, you know, live to play the next down, things of that nature. And what Greg Davis likes to tell Garrett Gilbert is any completion is a good completion. And even if you've got to complete it out of bounds and live to play to another down, sometimes that's the best decision. It'll be second from the 33. 5.15 to play in the third. Newton needs the kick out. And also trying to get out of the angle tackle. He is dropped by Earl Patan, a senior from Baton Rouge. And now it's going to be third and long, but still they're already in field goal territory, so you don't want to make another mistake like we saw before on the offensive interference. Now, well, Baylor's been able to force Texas into several field goals tonight, and they've done that by pursuing the football running to the ball and making sure tackles just like they did on the last play here comes the heat Gilbert gets rid of it in time and over his shoots Kirkendall as he turned no shot and Gilbert felt the heat coming so he had to deliver it early they're gonna blitz and it's one on one down on the bottom part of your screen again this is a great scenario for you to put the ball a little bit lower as far as trajectory goes and throw it to the back shoulder you can just have your wide receiver stop the defensive player goes right by and it's an easy completion inside the five yet inexperienced quarterbacks that's a throw that they have not learned yet because they don't have enough time in the fire to really learn that throw Tucker four for four tonight and now from 47 yards no good. His first miss of the night, a 47-yard attempt for Justin Tucker. And they come away empty, and now field position finally for Baylor due to the miss. So Baylor's going to have it at their own 31, and that's ties for the best start for a drive field position-wise for the Bears and around the Big 12 Conference today. The outstanding performances. Kendall Hunter, no shock there with 143 yards on the ground. Helu, how about three plus? And the first play of the game, 65 yards for a touchdown. Alex Robinson, 117. And Ryan Tannehill again. Look at the passing yards, an AM record. That's that's unbelievable because you know Gerard Johnson's down there, so clearly Tannehill getting the bulk of the snaps and playing very well. Big hole. Finley down the seam. Will anybody get him? Finley inside the 30. It looks like he's gone. He is. Touchdown, Baylor. 69 yards for Jay Finley coming up the record-setting performance of last week.
And the speed with which he hits this hole is what is so key. As soon as you find it, you get through there north and south. And Finley takes it all the way in for a touchdown. What an explosive run. Man, this Baylor offense, they can strike in a hurry. The point after is good by Aaron Jones, so the big plays, and I mean huge plays. That is 69-yard touchdown run, and don't forget, at the end of the first half, final minute, a 59-yard TD pass by Griffin, and that's our Whataburger. What a play by Jay Finley. You got to be decisive when you hit the hole as a running back, and then you have to have the explosiveness to also get to the end zone, and Finley showing you that ability after a long run for a touchdown last week, 82 yards against Kansas State, comes back with another long run against Texas. And the explosive nature of this Baylor team is why you have to score touchdowns and not kick field goals when your offense has great field position and you're moving it into their, into their red zone. Texas settling for too many field goals, and now Baylor striking quickly for the second time of the night. So Finley successful in the first half, had a five-yard average, not enough touches potentially. But now takes off the senior from Corsicana. And what a game we've got going now as Baylor's trying to win at Texas for the first time since 1997. That is sudden change. After a missed field goal to 47 yards, next snap goes for 69 the other way. Back deep. And it's going to be taken. Monroe is back there alone. And breaking tackles is the wide receiver. As he takes it across the 20, 21, out to the 22. And put down right at the 22 is Malcolm Williams. You know, as we look at this touchdown, the safeties are spread so far apart. Outside the hash and then almost all the way to the field hash. And as they approach the line of scrimmage, this close safety, and I believe that's Christian Scott, runs himself out of the play. Gets way too close to the line of scrimmage. When you're the last line of defense, you've got to hold your ground to be disciplined and not get yourself out of position. So undisciplined football from Texas leads to the long, long touchdown from Jay Finley. Texas now deep in their own territory. How do they respond? Newton barely gets out of the backfield. He stopped after maybe a half yard at the most. And we'll see now how Texas deals with adversity. Because all of a sudden, Baylor shocks them on their home field. Maybe doubt in the back of their mind inside of four left in the third. You got to continue to stick with the run game. It's been successful for you if you're Texas. But now you have to open it up off of the run game. Include Gilbert Moore on the zone read package. Start to throw a little play action pass in the pocket and not outside of the plot pocket, taking your shots down the field. Call it second and ten. Monroe, the decoy. Middle of the field, tight end, can't hang on, picked off and going the other way, Antonio Johnson. Look out, here come the Bears inside the 15. On the deflection, the senior from Waco sets it up. He read that perfectly over the middle, and there was a lot of congestion. What concentration from Antonio Johnson to get this interception. They try to roll out of the pocket, but the speed from Baylor has been there all night. And Tim Atchison, the senior from Coppers Cove, Texas, comes up with a big hit on Greg Smith. An illegal hit, a safe hit, lowering that target like people in football have been talking about for two straight weeks. And Johnson coming up with the interception. Now Baylor back in business after a long touchdown inside the red zone with a first down. So Atchison set it up with the pop. Ganaway in the backfield after the long run by Finley. Out of the zone, Reed, Robert Griffin breaks the tackle, scrambles and loses it, but he's already down at the five. Acho almost had him at the line of scrimmage. It's up to Muschamp's defense now to hold him to three. Well, and Sam Acho has played the zone read so well tonight, keeping his shoulders parallel, and that's why Griffin has to ultimately ride to the line of scrimmage even longer. You saw him ride that running back even longer to try to pull that ball out and gain positive yards, which he does, and he shows you his athleticism getting inside the five. Umpire came up real quickly. Now Griffin, he's ready to go as they set on second and four at the five, looking for the lead. Not there for Ganaway, the junior from DeKalb, Texas. It'll be third and four from the same spot. Downstairs, Jim Knox. Hey, guys, right now, Jay Finley not in the game. He was on the trainer table. They were working on his hamstring. It's going to be interesting to see if he gets back in. It looks like he will be, but right now, 
he is not in the game due to that hamstring problem. No, Noxie, are you taking the training table for your voice? A little bit, Joe. Just okay. a little bit. All right. <laughs> we need an injury update for Jim Knox. It'll be third and four at the five. And the Longhorns stop him here. Hold him to a potential three. Griffin by design. It's his call. Cut it back. And he's going to be short of the first down. They'll put him down to the two. Needed to get close to the one. So the struggles continue inside the red zone for the Baylor offense. We've seen them be explosive and score from distance, but this is where they have a hard time, and it's because the field condenses. They are predicated on space, and they beat you in one-on-one -on -one matchups. At this point, you don't gain a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups because the safeties don't have to play far from the line of scrimmage, and the horizontal game is usually taken out of it. Art Bryles, I don't disagree. This is too important. They're going to call a timeout. I know it's early in the second half, but he is going to stop it to set things up on fourth at a yard. You brought up the red zone. That has been the one negative. They've gotten there a lot. 33 chances inside the 20 for the Baylor Bears, but out of the 33 pops, only 14 touchdowns. Well, and, and what they try to do is put defenders in space, Joel, and, and they're trying to bracket the defenders in a run-pass option or making the defenders make a decision between Robert Griffin and Jay Finley or Robert Griffin and Kendall Wright. And when, when it's this close to the end zone, the defense usually plays more aggressive, and they can play man to man so at this point that's why it becomes hard for Baylor we remind you Fox Sports Southwest.com has it blanketed anything you want to know about the Big 12 it's covered log on right now and join the conversation in the steel game lounge it's fan form with Kevin Flaherty a lot more too so it's Fox Sports Southwest.com the place if you are a Big 12 fan and what a year for the Big 12. 1917 Texas, the last time and the only time Texas went, or Baylor went for it on fourth. They got it on a sneak, and they also got a touchdown on the drive. And Baylor's going big. They're going to have to call another timeout. Whoa. He's a cool customer. He pointed to, like, it's on me. <laughs> Art Bryles. There's only one left in the game now for Baylor. In a tough place to win for them. As we mentioned, eight wins, 43 losses, two ties. All time since the series started back in 1901. So they haven't had a lot of success in Austin, to say the least. Well, this is probably one of their best teams and that they're going to have a chance for that. And, and here's Art calling that second time out. And then he's going to turn to his staff and his players. And he says, yeah, that's my fault. We're sorry, fellas, but we got to get this right because I know how important this scenario is. 1917. But at least he's got a little humor about it, too, right? At least he can laugh at himself. Yeah, he, he's oblivious to 100,000. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Fourth and a yard from the two. Griffin got the first and goal. He has put down inside the one, but he got the first down, I'm almost certain. They say the ball came free. Griffin. Man, the Bears say he was already down. Man, I believe that's the call anyway. Yeah, he just had to get it inside the one. He's inches away from the goal line, so it was the appropriate call. But it should be first and goal there. It all started on the pick by Antonio Johnson. Atchison with a big hit. Johnson off the deflection. And now first and goal, Baylor. So the two for two on fourth downs. They were expensive, those those timeouts. Let's see if it pays off. Over the top, did he get in? No. Boy, pretty good scrum going on. Robert Griffin denied again. And, and like a fighter, those are some pretty good body shots. Yeah, absolutely. He tries to go over the top, which is so tough. And, and correctly, they're going to call him down right about you know, four inches, five inches away from the goal line. This is a great time to fake the run and get Griffin up out in space and a run pass option. Won't get there again unless he gets a second effort. No whistle yet. They have, now they finally blow it dead. They're waiting for progress. You can see where it's going to be marked. This is precious real estate. It absolutely is. And Will Muschamp knows it. Art Bryles knows it. And the 100,000 
here at Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium. They know it as well. As the cl clock is dwindling down in the third quarter, and the Texas defense urging the fans to get in on this one. Third and goal. Baylor has to get in the end zone. You cannot settle for a field goal in this situation. They're going to have to settle for the opposite end. That's the end of three. Which is smart because they were going in the close end of the stadium. Come down here where the sound is not quite as much of a factor. What a good one of the Big 12 South. Texas by two, but that lead in jeopardy when we come back at the end of the third, 1917 Longhorns. And you're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. On the quarterback sneak, no word yet. And where will they put it? Touchdown banner. They have taken the lead. For the third straight snap, they go with the quarterback sneak. Got to keep churning your feet and get great push from the offensive line. And Robert Griffin is at the bottom of that pile somewhere with the football across the goal line. It's hard to know exactly where he's at, but he's under there somewhere. He's across the goal line, and now Baylor takes the lead on Texas, 23 to 19. So Baylor, you saw Art Bryles say two right away. That had to be one of the longest time-consuming 11-yard drives I've ever seen. <laughs> Three straight quarterback sneaks, two timeouts. <laughs> so it seven, took a while. Seven plays, 11 yards, and it took. Better than three and a half minutes. Now for two. Ganaway in the backfield. It'll be Griffin looking to k -Rod. And he can't hang on. k Johnson available. It was there. And it stays a four-point Baylor Bear lead. Looking for their first win in Austin since 1997. And the Bears lead at the opening minute of the fourth. Sam Knox, DJ Monroe will take the short one at the 16, looking for a lane. Man, he'll be dropped shy of the 30. So that's where Texas has it now, playing catch up once again. It's the opening minute of the fourth, Joel Myers, Joel Platt, Jim Knox down to the sideline, and Garrett Gilbert in the passing department. He is 11 of 23 for 174 yards. Most of his damage, though, in the second half has been on the ground. Yeah, he's made good decisions with his feet. He's got to come back, though. That interception on the last possession leading to the Baylor touchdown. Let's see how the young quarterback reacts to his first mistake of this game. He'll give it a little counteraction. Man, dropped for a loss. D.J. Monroe. Byron Lander's been all over the place. A strong safety. He leaves the Bears and stops. He's a senior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Yeah, came in with 76 tackles. That was good for third in the Big 12. New Very good player, physical player from the safety position. Yeah, they call crash. Now, moving the pocket by design. Man. Goodwin couldn't get away. That's a sure-handed tackle on the outside. So, Goodwin brought down by Stevenson, first-year freshman from Lancaster, Texas, and another. Huge third down early in the fourth. Well, at least it's in a manageable, manageable situation. Getting Gilbert on the outside, give him, giving him that easy throw against a soft corner. He can just roll out, put it on the outside number, and now you're in a third and three situation, which is much more manageable than third and long. They're only three of nine on their conversions. Here comes the blitz. Gilbert got the first down, and he also got John Childs. Across the 40, out to the 44. So good read. He knew it had to come out in a hurry. And a nice job by Gilbert staying patient. Too many times 
on third down. A quarterback wants to throw it too soon. I want to get that conversion, and yet he waits until Childs breaks, finds the open zone, and then delivers a strike to move the stick. So a very effective throw on third down from Gary Gilbert. All night, Texas has had to settle for field goals. Now they're down by more than three. What's it going to be? Underneath, Newton. And out in the flat, it's to the 49 for Trey Newton. A gain of just about five. Baker put him down, so Gilbert reading down his yeah. progressions. And, and hanging in there, knowing he's going to get hit, taking a shot, protecting himself. This is what starts to earn the confidence and the respect of the older players on the offensive unit. This is how you develop into a leader as you start making plays in crunch time in the fourth quarter. Second and five. The load's in there. Cody Johnson. False start, Texas. Ball start on the offense. Number 64, five-yard penalty. Second down. Oh, That's left tackle. Kyle Hicks. It's been his bugaboo. Too many penalties for this offensive line for Texas. Pre-snap penalties will kill an offense. You have a successful play on first down. You get about five yards, and now you're right back in behind the sticks at second and ten. This is why Dre drive stall and you have to end up settling for field goals that's from a guy who's got 35 career starts Gilbert out of the gun flushed out Gene Petit's forced him Gilbert running for his life and gets out of bounds after he's pushed out by Antonio Johnson so right now the difference the pick by Johnson the touchdown a four-point lead and up until that point Texas had not turned it over and that's when they came in as a point of emphasis creating takeaways and they already had two tonight but they gave it away and Baylor, you got to throw, you know, a storyline in this game is the Baylor secondary because they've covered down the field very good. Garrett Gilbert has had time. He just has not had people open down the field. You got to credit this secondary for the Bears. I think they've played sensational. And that's without Chance Casey, the starting cornerback. Now, Gilbert stepping up, and Childs has it. He lost it. Incomplete. It was there, but with Atchison on his back, he pried it loose. Childs still down. Looked like Gilbert's arm was hit as he moved up in the pocket. It was kind of a fluttering pass. Childs tries to bring it in. It was close. That's a that's a tough catch. It was it was probably losing it all the way down though. And fortunately, Childs back up. It looked like Phil Taylor had the pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, and so uh, the ball definitely was tipped or his arm hit or something in the pocket. Gilbert trying to avoid the rush, but credit the front seven for Baylor. They've gotten after him in this drive, putting him behind the sticks. Chris Burke waits back for the punt. Man, Tucker handling both plays kicking and punting duties. The over end over ender. And the fair catch back at the 15. So a long field, but just the same. Baylor on top. Three minutes into the fourth in Austin. That's the 40 and tack on some yardage there. Emmanuel Acho doing anything he could to get to Robert Griffin. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense number 18. 15 yard penalty. First down. This is what's so tough about Baylor is you can do your job all night long, all night long, and Sam Ocho has done a terrific job. He squeezes too far one time, one time, and Griffin gets the edge, plus the block in the backfield from Jay Finley, the senior from Texas, sealing Ocho inside, allowing Griffin to get the edge, and then the world-class hurdler races down the field for another first down. This is such an important drive for Baylor. A touchdown here with the ineffectiveness of Texas to score touchdowns could ultimately put this game away. From the 15, it goes all the way to the 42. And Finley has his leg sliced right out from under him. Coming up, Christian Scott, the safety. That was truly the first time tonight. That's how good it's been for Muschamp and his defensive unit. The first time tonight that Griffin has gotten out in space. But it only takes one. Yep. First 10 line brought to you by Phillips Televisions because they had for the most part contained him. Now a second and ten. Clock moves inside of 11. And don't forget Banner with only one timeout left. Still all three on the board for the Longhorns.
Griffin with time. Man. Poked away by Aaron Williams. That was just a small window for the wide receiver. Good coverage by Williams. Yeah, Josh Gordon's trying to get this pass, and, and Williams does a great job of staying off the back of Josh Gordon and getting his left hand around in front in order to bat that ball down. Too many times you see the cornerback just go right through the wide receiver, and that's what draws the flag. Baylor 5 of 12. Now looking at a third and 10. Slides the loopy right in front of the Longhorns bench. And over the middle, get the first down of the quick hitter by the speedster. It's taken in by Kendall Wright. Just a slant action. This is a quarterback that understands what's going on on the field. Here comes the cover zero blitz, leaving the middle of the field wide open. This is a side adjust route, what we used to call a looky route. And there's Kendall Wright in the middle of the field. And as a quarterback, you get the ball, you set up tall, deliver it on the frame, and move the sticks. Five minutes into the fourth. They can't slow down Griffin now, starting back at his own 15. It's a first and 10 of the 31. Acho rips down Griffin. So Finley tried to take it, and there's a guy who <laughs> succeeded just a little here. Sideline disappointed so far, but knows with the comebacks that he orchestrated, Chase McCoy. That there's plenty of time left. Uh, this is such a quarterback oriented game, and that's why Baylor has a lead right now. That's why Baylor is ranked and Texas is not, is because they've got Robert Griffin. The guy is a sensational player. And of course, Colt McCoy on the sideline. That's why Texas was so good for four years. That's why they won a national championship with Vince Young, and they were in the game last year with Colt McCoy. So now Griffin out of the gun on second and 10. Still with Finley in the backfield. Finley. Trying to bolt and down low they had him. That was Emmanuel Acho, the junior from Dallas, couldn't scramble away. And uh, Finley hobbled a little bit. You can tell he is not 100% out there. Not 100%. They were working on his hamstring a little bit earlier. After that long run for a touchdown, he might have pulled up a little bit lame. But boy, this Texas defense understanding the importance of this drive and what they have to do to get off the field, not only to hold him to a field goal, but possibly off the field with no points for Baylor. And they get the 10. Over the middle, they'll get more than 10. Down the middle, touchdown, Kendall Wright. 30 yards. No safety in the neighborhood. The big play again from Baylor and just a dime from Robert Griffin. Blake Gideon taking off into the slant area, thinking that that ball is going to be thrown shorter than it was, and Kendall Wright with great concentration, catching it with his hands and running for a touchdown. Extra point from Aaron Jones is perfect, and they are stunt in Austin. So Baylor all-time record established tonight by Robert Griffin. He shatters the books for the Bears who lead by 11. Bears on the touchdown of 30 yards to Kendall Wright with an 11-point lead. As back deep, it'll be Monroe stacking up with Malcolm Williams. Ben Parks will kick it away for the Baylor Bears. And boy, already 6-2 and two in the top 25. This would be huge for the Baylor program. High one, Monroe. Trying to make a miss and a flag with a block in the back. It looked like it may have been a running made for the backfield with a block in the back, Fozzie Whitaker. During the return, block in the back. Number 28 of the return team. 10 yard penalty. First down. It was Whitaker. And let's head downstairs. Jim Knox. Oh, Baylor has all the momentum on their sidelines. In fact, their motto here in the fourth quarter, guys, is finish strong. You see it right here. They're slapping everybody on the pads. Everybody's going down the bench. The main thing is finish strong, think positive. It's been a while since Baylor's defeated Texas, guys. It's been 1997. That is a while. Mac Brown wasn't the head coach at the time. And now Texas down by two scores, 833 to play. They've got it all the way back after the mark off at their own 16. 
So the Heat on the young quarterback, Garrett Gilbert, with Trey Newton in the backfield. Here comes the blitz. It eludes the pressure momentarily. And now, coming back out the bottom is Mike Davis. Davis has the first down across the 30. Give Gilbert credit. As we look back on the touchdown, what about the safety? Well, here's Blake Gideon. He's a single high safety, which means he's got the deep third responsibility. He tries to gamble on the eyes of the quarterback, Robert Griffin, and go for the slant route as he takes off for that alley. As soon as he misses the pass, there's no one left deep for the Texas defense, and Kendall Wright scores easily once that ball clears Gideon's head. Biggest lead of the game for either side. It's Baylor's now by 11. Off the Cody Johnson play fake. Too tall for the tight end, Greg Smith, who goes at about 6'4 or 6'5. It'll stop with 7.56 to play. So you look at what Texas has to do, which is two, two possessions, two scores, and three timeouts on the board. And they probably only have two possessions left potentially in this game. Hey, you can't have any more mistakes. There cannot be penalties. You can't turn the ball. No mistakes if you're Texas. At this point, you're playing with fire. You've got to be perfect in order to score a couple of times. Got a run play on second and ten and breaking tackles. Gets the first down. Big guy. Cody Johnson, he's got a lean, doesn't he? <laughs> Junior from Waller, Texas. Boy, he runs hard. He absolutely runs hard, finding the seam. And the hole opened up. Britt Mitchell, the right tackle, pulling around to the left side, sealing that hole off for Cody Johnson, who ultimately gets the first down. But you're right, forward lean, that momentum, that positive influence going forward. Underneath the tight end. And they'll give up that play because of the time. And Lender applies the hit. And also remember, when we talk about the difficulty for Texas making up this kind of deficit 11 six of their eight games this year Joel they've got two touchdowns or less exactly and they've, they've struggled putting the ball in the end zone and a lot of that has to do with the fact their offensive line has not played well you've seen the pressure that Garrett Gilbert has been under all night wide of the intended target good effort by the wide receiver Goodwin on that side but that one is hot and high and away and that's a great example of it, Joel, is that the, the play caller feeling like he has to change the throw spot, get Gilbert out of the pocket because he doesn't feel like his front five are going to be able to protect against Baylor. If you're confident in your front five, you're going to sit in the pocket, go vertical, or throw some balls short and increase the tempo of your offense. It's been a strange season for the Texas Longhorns. Dismal numbers on third down. Gilbert's got a ton of time. And a wide open receiver, good one. Drive is still alive, and so are the Longhorns. Down to the 36. And like clockwork, the front five give you time. And what can you do? Go down the field. Get the sticks. The zone coverage cannot hold up this long when Garrett Gilbert can take a couple of hit steps and then get the football down the field to Marquise Goodwin. Johnson back into the backfield. Gilbert calls the quarterback draw. For the most part, they stayed at home on that play, though. Takes it down to the 32, gain of only four. If you're thinking about it, when we talked about it the first time since Mac Brown took over, consecutive home losses. That's Cody Johnson in the game. He picked up a great block on Antonio Johnson that allowed Gilbert to get positive yardage. But this is the time in the game where you're, where you're always going to have two safeties back. And the part of the field that you have to be able to exploit is the middle of the field. Those intermediate zones and vertical seams right down the hash mark with guys like your tight end. Earl Patan never left his position on that one. Now it's out to the playmaker. Can he break a tackle? Yes, he can. Mike Davis, the true freshman. This is the one guy that we've been told by the staff that really has home run ability. Yeah, he does. He's a, just a true freshman, but he's coming into his own on that last play. And I, I like the fact that you get him the ball in space. They try to run a pressure, and Tim Atchison doesn't get to his spot soon enough to safety. If you're going to blitz, you got to roll that safety up so he's covering the flat sooner. He's late, and the result is a first down. First down of the 19. Cody Johnson. Back to the line, and that is it. Last time, Texas lost three consecutive games at home. 
you got to go back 22 years. Yeah, and, 1988, and the, and the head coach was David McWilliams. And the tempo and the sense of urgency, Joel, right now, it's got to pick up. You're talking about 520 and counting now in this game in the fourth quarter. You can't take this much time between snaps. They started back at the own 16 on second and 10. Gilbert underneath to the tight end. Matthews with little yardage, only down to the 15 for four. So four down territory everywhere, although they do need two scores. So you've got to get a field goal out of it. And then it's always what? tough to chase points. That's why when you have the opportunity, you got to get into the end zone. So now a huge opportunity, third and six. The young quarterback has got to make a throw in this situation. Pocket holds up, and it's available over the middle once again, Davis. He comes alive late in the contest. He has really helped this drive, and it's down to a first and goal to the six. The true freshman from Dallas, Texas. What a smart play, settling down in a zone and giving his quarterback his frame, turning and giving him a big frame to throw to. That enables Garrett Gilbert, who did have great protection, to step up and throw it accurately for a first down. It's first and goal to the six. Cody Johnson, he'll get it. And won't go far. Inside the five, down to the four. Again, taking a lot of time off the clock. Let's see if they get up to the line in a hurry this time. Too conservative. You've got to score a touchdown. Time is an absolute factor in a two-possession game. Now second and goal inside of four minutes to play. Keeping it on the ground. Same result. And it's rare when you hear this in Austin in the last 13 seasons. Timeout has been taken. The first of the second half by Mac Brown and the Longhorns. They're desperate and they're down by 11. Yard line. They needed a quick strike. Gilbert on third and goal. Out of the reach. Good coverage on Kirkendall. It looked like the tight end over to the right side was available. Potentially, you're trying to run him to the flat. Greg Smith is going to take off to the flat and run a bit of a crossing route with the top two receivers. The corner did sit, so I see why Garrett Gilbert got off of that read. The corner stayed wide outside of the hash mark, but really, the questioning I'm going to do is on first and second down just running the ball taking time off the clock not getting in the end zone not giving yourself an opportunity to maybe throw three times into the end zone get yourself three chances to score and now Tucker's got to attempt another field goal and the chances that's the key you see all those field goals for Justin Tucker this is like an extra point at 21 yard or he gets it so now it's a one score game if they can get a two point conversion just get the ball back there's no guarantee though with Robert Griffin that they can get it back against a, a team that's top five offensively in the nation. So they are stunned, to say the least, because ever since Mac Brown took over, they have not experienced adversity quite like this. It was 15 plays, 81 yards, and it took just about five minutes off the clock. A 21 yard field goal, the fifth of the night for Justin Tucker, but that is basically the theme of the night for Texas. Field goals, they didn't get touchdowns. And kind of the story of the season. Yeah, it really has been, and they haven't been a very high-scoring team. When you're facing a team in Baylor that has scored 30 or more points in seven of their eight football games, they're averaging 42 points a game in Big 12 contests. The explosive nature of Baylor's offense, which we've seen tonight here in Austin, you've got to be able to score with those teams in order to win, and kicking field goals is not going to do it. Missed opportunities and missed chances. Back deep. It'll be Mikhail Baker. Along with Leander Sampson. And Baker ought to stay there. And he will. Smart play. Well, our Polaris hardest working player. And he took some pounds tonight. Robert Griffin the third, especially that goal line situation. He absolutely did. Three quarterback sneaks, but he's been. The best player on the field tonight. His ability to throw the ball, create the big plays, hit Terrence William on that third down late in the first half, and ultimately gets into the end zone. Couple of touchdown tosses tonight. 
put him as Baylor's all-time leading touchdown thrower in the school's history. The fourth and one, he gets a new set of downs, and then three sneaks later, he's into the end zone, giving Baylor the lead, and then throws that touchdown to right for a two-possession lead. Finley takes his shot. Ball security is the key now. And they'll keep it on the ground. It'll be second and ten from the 20. Two timeouts left, three and a half to play for Texas. And at this point, Robert Griffin has to be aware of the play clock. It's right underneath the goalpost at the far end zone. Two clocks right on the left and right-hand side of the goalpost. Do not snap this ball. If the play clock and game clock are running, you snap it inside of five seconds. He's taking his time. See, he's wired to you. It's in his helmet. He doesn't have his coordinator in his helmet. Now, inside of five, here we go. Second and ten. Finley again. And getting him low, Keenan Robinson. So now, Texas will take a timeout with good reason. And it started very slowly for Baylor in the second half, but they picked it up. They absolutely did. And with the big play. And, and, and also a short field in the middle off the interception by Antonio Johnson. Last time they won here, well, Art Bryles wasn't around. It was back in 1997. They won it by two. And yeah, they won in Austin 23 to 21, November 1st of 97. Ricky Williams running for 244 yards. Didn't make any difference, though. Quarterback Jeff Watson leading the Baylor Bears to their last win in Austin. They've only got eight overall in a series that started back in 1901. So it's already been a major accomplishment for Art Bryles and his squad. They're six and two, bowl eligible for the first time since 95. A lot of firsts since back in the early 90s. But boy, would this be icing early with a lot of things to accomplish still. In fact, only four and 67 against the Big 12 South. And now coming into the conference. That's, that's right. And, and finding that level of success now. Biggest play of the game, third down opportunity. Griffin looking for the slant and the collision course. Getting him. And Aaron Williams. Are they okay? It didn't have a chance to be completed. It was thrown at the feet of the wide receiver. Yeah, it was you saw that collision from up here before it occurred. Boom. Right into the chest of Aaron Williams. And the chin. Mm. Didn't see each other reacting to the ball. Baylor trying to throw that slant route and just defenseless players this time on the defensive end because of the nature of the play going for that ball. And Gideon goes down with his helmet. Williams kind of stays high. That was a scary yeah. looking hit. And Williams got the worst of it, unfortunately, as you can see the helmet coming under the, the impact of the chest and the helmet a little bit under his chin. So our prayers and our thoughts and our fingers and everything else is crossed right now for Aaron Williams. Gideon sitting up as we saw, but still the shock effect. Hmm. That was a high-speed, violent collision between two teammates. Blake Gideon, 205 pounds, coming up from his safety position and getting up now off of the turf. Yeah, that's positive to see. Yeah, that's very positive to see. Honorary captain tonight, along with his mother, a breast cancer survivor, and the team dedicating the game tonight to the breast cancer awareness see the pink wristband on his left and right wrist but let's hope Aaron Williams is okay as he's continuing to be attended to down at about the 22 yard line he hasn't moved the thing yet unfortunately Young men know it, the tough part of the game.
They continue to look at the junior from Round Rock, and we're going to take a timeout as Art Bryles comes on over. Mac Brown's already there. We'll come right back to Austin. But there's still, you can, boy, 100,000 in the stadium to start the night, and you can hear a pin drop. The fact that his uh, legs are moving, though, just such a such a positive sign, and you'd almost hear the sigh of relief from the hundred thousand here. You took shots as a former quarterback with Colorado, and they're telling Aaron, "Don't rush now." And but that's great news. Sitting up, okay. But talk about a collective sigh. So after a collision like that where it seemed like they're going 100 miles an hour Gideon comes off the field. Fortunately Aaron Williams is now sitting up. He got the worst of it. There's no question. And the Nagurski award watch list player very good player from Round Rock Texas a junior Aaron Williams tied for second on UT's all time punt block list. There's Blake Gideon who was involved in the collision as well with Aaron Williams making his way out to see if his teammate and friend is all right and he's standing now what a fantastic sign that is you know with the kind of collision he had he may have just completely been knocked out right he was motionless for the first 90 seconds to two minutes out there if not longer so it may have just been a knockout blow oh what a good sign So Aaron Williams, good news for everybody, not just Texas Longhorn fans. Came on a third down, so believe it or not, Texas is going to get the football back. But that is very secondary. And, uh, you know, the unimportance of of the game all of a sudden, you know, in, a, in an instant perspective adjusted for a hundred plus thousand here in Austin. And now Baylor to punt the football away. 249 left, Joel. Texas down by eight. Curtis Brown back to receive this punt, and they should get fairly good field position, although Baylor's punter, Epperson, he's hit some beauties here tonight. Two-time All-Big 12 performer, Epperson. Pressure came, and he delivers. He sends out a magnificent punt, and it's put on the ground by Curtis Brown again. He... Tried to pick it up and run with it. The loose ball, the scramble continues. And who's got it? Did Baylor come away with it? They're saying they've got it. That should do it if they do recover the. And they do. Second fumble of the night for Curtis Brown after a 69 yard punt by Everson. And an angled punt forcing Curtis ba Brown to run all the way to the sidelines. Flag now on the field with some helmets off. So there'll be some penalties now on Texas. But that was caused by the punt. Curtis Brown sprinting backwards and, and angled almost like a center fielder into the gap. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number three, Texas, half the distance of the goal. First down. Trey Hand, who's been to the middle of things on specials. We saw him earlier in the game. He was the one who covered it, and it goes down to the eight of the Longhorn. Well, they had their opportunities. Curtis Brown had his opportunity right here to just fall on the ball, and then it's continued to be bobbled. Few Texas players have their hands on it and are unable to secure the ball. All you got to do is fall on it. Possession is primary in that case, not gaining yards. If you're Robert Griffin and Baylor and you're up by eight, all you need is a field goal. So do you even gamble? There's no, in fact, right, one time out of the board, you can, uh, because you can't turn it over. They're potentially going to review this. Before the ball was snapped, the last play is under further review. So they're going to find out if, if Texas 
They're going to find out, and I don't know how they can determine well, if Texas recovered uh, it. Joel, I think they're going to be looking at number 33, Jordan Hicks. He's going to come in late, and as the ball comes, he picks it up right here. That's Jordan Hicks, and now he's got the is ball. Is he down? And it, the ball comes out, but his knee was close to being down, his right knee, and I believe that's what they're going to look at. The previous look that we had actually had the, the, the look. Great camera work from our guys. This is the look I'm speaking of. Watch Jordan Hicks, a true freshman from Ohio. Linebacker, great linebacker. Picks up the ball. He has it. It's secured. And now is his knee down yeah, before the ball? Now that ball is loose well, where the, we're seeing it. Yeah, but the knee was down actually when he was trying to come up. The right, what's the right knee? Right. It's simultaneous. There's the knee down. And is the ball out yet? The, not yet. Uh, man, He's down. And that's it, that's it going to be, be a out yet. tough call. Very interesting. And every, every play is reviewed. This is going to be a very tough call for the replay booth. And remember, here's the deal. The most important part of this in, in replay is what is ruled on the field. The call is Baylor football, so they have to find indisputable video evidence to turn this into a Texas first down. And I don't know, Joel, if they're going to get it from that look. It was too simultaneous, like you were saying. It's been a long night for the guys at the booth Ooh, because they had... have been called on for some really <laughs> tight plays. They absolutely have. It started earlier in the game. Remember, Terrence Williams had that ball that was touching the ground. They had the, the muffed punt previously in this game. So both muffed pump punts now under review. Uh, you remember Texas got the ball on that one. An interesting ruling of a touchback. Gave the ball to Texas at their 20. That all, all ultimately that drive led the points, and they're going to be looking at this one for a while, trying to, to determine if Jordan Hicks, Gatorade yeah. Ohio Player of the Year last year as a linebacker, number one linebacker in the country, recovered the fumble. Definitely had possession. It's just a matter of if he in fact fumbled before that right knee was down. We saw a pretty good shot. The knee was down, but was the ball possessed? Was it gone when the knee was down? And on the line right now, I mean, you're, you're talking about some historic streaks. Mac Brown and the University of Texas for nine straight seasons have won 10 football games or more. And if they are, if this ruling goes against Texas, they're going to end up losing this game because of the field position and the field goal opportunity that Baylor will undoubtedly have after a few runs. Only one other team has done what Texas has done, and that's Florida State. And that's Florida State. And that will be gone. They will not be able to do that this season. They are going to have to run the table from here on out to get to that 10 win mark. And Mac Brown told us this week, Joel, he said, that's still my goal. This, is why, where we're this going. is why you don't want to be a replay official. Oh, man. And here we go. After further review, number 33 of the receiving team had possession of the ball and was ruled down by contact at the eight yard line. After the enforcement of the unsportsmanlike conduct foul, Texas will have the ball first and 10 at the four yard line. Well, another call from the governor and Texas now back at the four, 96 yards away with one timeout. Can they do it? because they have not been able to convert. They've got five field goals tonight. That's why I say, can they do it? They have not been very successful in the red zone. Can they even get, get close to the red zone? That has been the problem all year. Garrett Gilbert has played very well. He's had several passes dropped that were right on, on the money from wide receivers. Early in the game, they had an opportunity, Joel, if you remember, Barrett Matthews, wide open in the end zone, dropped that touchdown. He's played very well. It's just a matter of if the other 10 can step their games up and help Garrett Gil Gilbert get down the field. The last five games, Texas has not had more than two touchdowns in the game. They've only got one tonight to go along with all the field goals. So they're going to mark it off. And will they put it at the four? Or will they leave it at the eight? It will stay where it's at now. At the eight-yard line for the Longhorns. So it looked like it was over with 2.34 to play. Plenty of time. Bozzi Whitaker in the backfield with Garrett Gilbert. He's looking underneath. Tight end's got it. And the first down for Greg Smith, the senior from Montgomery, Texas. 
There's a ton of time. Ton of time, the crossing route. It's a great call in this situation because the linebackers, their natural instinct in this situation is to get depth and back to the deeper part of their zones. You roll the tight end underneath them for an easy completion. Here comes the pressure. Gilbert gets it away, and Davis can't hang on. He saw out of the corner of his eye Atchison, the free safety, coming over. Uh, that had to be the case because he was lining him up. And you've got to be frustrated if you're Garrett Gilbert because he hung in the pocket and took a shot and threw a very accurate ball down the field. And that ball has got to be hauled in by Mike Davis. You said, I said before the drive, someone's got to step up and make a play and help Gilbert out. And so far, that isn't being done by Mike Davis. He was the key in the last drive. Pressure again. Gilbert can't get away. They drop him a sack and a loss of about four yards. It'll be third down now. Man, will Texas use their final timeout? Yes, it will on third and 14. Yeah, I, I love the call. Mike Hicks blitzing from his safety position, forcing Gary Gilbert to make quicker decisions than he wants to. This is how you run two-minute defense. When you've got to go the whole length of the field, it's so much easier from a quarterback's perspective if they drop back into prevent because I can check the ball down, I can throw it to my tight end underneath, I can do all those things and move the chains, keep the clock stopped, and ultimately get down the field and score. When you start to pressure a quarterback in this situation, he plays faster than he wants to and usually has to throw the ball into tighter windows in man-to-man -man coverage. That doesn't stop the clock and that doesn't get first downs. Rodney Chadwick with a big sack with 2.09 to play. Now Texas out of timeouts. And can Baylor finish strong? They've been rock solid once again the entire game. And especially when Texas had opportunities to get into the end zone. So third and 14. Show the blitz again from Chadwick who backs off. And now a flat. It'll be a false start. False start on the offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. Third down. Right tackle. Brett Mitchell. Another senior, former tie it in. Make it third and 19. That's 11 for better than 100 yards. The penalties against the Longhorns. With only five so far against Baylor. Need the big play. Here comes Gilbert with the heat coming. And he's got the big play. He's got a lost football, though, after the catch, and Baylor should come away with it. Goodwin put it on the ground, and it looked like Baylor covered it. I don't know if they're going to be able to review this one. Bears say they have it. No official word yet. It was ripped away from Goodwin, and Chadwick comes out with it, I believe. Yes, Baylor's got the football with 2-0-1 well, to play. What a play from Baker who comes in and knocks this ball down late. A terrific throw from Gilbert. But here Baker comes in and he brings the right arm right to the football. Goodwin just flat drops it. I mean, that was not a hard hit. He wasn't, stra you know, kind of tomahawking the football. Didn't Goodwin protect just it. didn't protect the ball. He had These it out wide there, receivers he? from Texas have made far too many mistakes in order to win a football game in the Big 12. Now, a knee taken by Robert Griffin. Texas cannot stop the clock, and they're headed to their third straight loss at home for the first time since 1988. David McWilliams, the head coach at the time. And on the opposite side, as you saw, the celebration for the Baylor Bears. Well, they get a large one off their back. Oh. Winning in Austin for the first time since 1997 and only the ninth time in school history since they began the series with the Longhorns in 1901. Baylor's going to get their first victory as a ranked team <laughs> since 1991. What a feeling for those kids. They earned bowl eligibility last week against Kansas State and then they come into Austin, Texas and win for the ninth time in their school's history against the University of Texas. Disbelief even as we look to the Baylor band. Man. <laughs> you could see the shock on their faces. 
So the underdog comes through again. Art Bryles and his Baylor Bears. And they were underdogs coming into Austin. They'll count it down, and you think they're celebrating about, what, 90 miles away at the most in Waco? I think I'm going to Hell Camp for a shake tonight. <laughs> <laughs> On the circle. It's official. That's it. Baylor has done it. They have upset the Texas Longhorns, winning here for the first time since 1997. They have shocked the Texas Longhorns and 100,000 faithful tonight at Memorial Stadium. Joel, the, the plays by Robert Griffin, the three consecutive touchdowns of the second half, they delivered as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, uh, congratulations. Uh, first time Baylor's defeated Texas since 1997. This has to be your biggest win since coming to Baylor. <laughs> well, they're, they're all big, you know, without a doubt. I'm just so proud of our guys' resiliency. You know, we fell behind by nine in the third quarter and just kept fighting, kept believing against the a really fine football team here at Texas in a great environment here. So I'm I'm really proud of our players and the way they just kept fighting tonight. The record uh, you broke is like the miracle <laughs> on the Brads's, but with well, Grant Trapp. Well, we're just trying to get better each week, Jim, and that's, that's been our motto all year. We, we just think about what we have to do that Saturday. We don't look at the big pitch. We focus on the small pitcher. The small pitcher tonight was beating Texas at Texas. How about the job Robert Griffin did tonight? You guys needed points in the second half, and you got them in the end zone. Uh, best quarterback in America, in my opinion, no doubt. Talk about what it does for this team. What has been the turnaround art on this team? What has been the turnaround since Bel you've been here belief, at Baylor? Belief, attitude, effort, and a very much of a, a hunger, desire to, to excel. These guys, and we have, been whipped around for a while, so they, they're working hard to make it feel right, and it feels good. All right, congratulations on the big win. Joel? Well. And nobody's going to dispute his claim that he's the best quarterback in America. Even Mac Brown said Robert Griffin is to the Baylor Bears what Vince Young was to the Texas Longhorns. He is that much of a playmaker and a guy that changes the game completely. So a 30-22 win for the Baylor Bears. Coming up next, some of you are going to see the final score, while those of you in the Big 12 area stay tuned. Big 12 Live, it's coming up next. And we've got a triple header for you. Baylor on the road at Oklahoma State next week. It'll be followed by Oklahoma and a and Big win for AM today. And then Pac-10, Arizona State with USC in the nightcap. For Joel Klatt and Jim Knox, our entire college football Saturday crew, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. What a night for Baylor in Austin. Have a great weekend, everybody.